I'm sure most of you know what an iceberg chart is, and you're also probably familiar with the FNAF series, so I'm not going to go on for hours and hours with a long intro. Today, I want to explain every entry on the ultimate Five Nights at Freddy's iceberg as best as I can. This is the director's cut of the iceberg, which combines all six parts into one. But that's not it, as after the iceberg, we will interview the creator of this iceberg, Natter John, and go over new entries and the future for these icebergs. It is certainly a treat and you won't want to miss it. Not going to waste any more time with this, so, for the last time, let's get into the iceberg. Tour Door March This is the song that Freddy plays when he's outside your door after the power has gone out. The original song is from the opera Carmen by George Bizet, although Freddy's version is more music box sounding. This song has become synonymous with the series, appearing in the most recent game, Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted. Docco Louis Dawkins, otherwise known as Docco, is a YouTube personality who primarily makes FNAF videos. Docco started out as a streamer on Twitch and started growing his YouTube channel after his FNAF videos started gaining traction. After FNAF 3 was released, Docco fully dedicated his channel to FNAF content. He is most famous for having been the second person to beat 5020 mode in Ultimate Custom Night on July 9th, 2018. He has interviewed voice actors from the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise on his web series called The FNAF Show. After beating 5020 mode, Scott Cawthon, the creator of the series, was interviewed by Doc in an hour and a half long video published on August 8th, 2018. Kitchen Camera This refers to how in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, the camera feed for the kitchen isn't working. Instead, it only has an audio feed where you can hear pots and pans when Chica is in the room. Some have suggested that the kitchen is where Golden Freddy resides when he isn't attacking the player. However, this is purely speculation. Nights 6 and 7 In most of the Five Nights at Freddy's games, there exists a 6th and 7th night, with the 7th night normally being a custom night where you can adjust the AI level of the animatronics. These nights are normally unlocked separately on the title screen after beating the 5th night. Fans find this ironic as the game series is called Five Nights at Freddy's despite being there for a week canonically. Matt Pat. Matthew Patrick, otherwise known as Matt Pat, is a YouTube personality as the owner of the Food Theorist, Film Theorist, and most famously, the Game Theorist channels. He is known for adding scholarly topics into video games, until his FNAF theories came along and made them all about piecing together the lore of the series. At the time of this video, he has made 48 videos, with one coming later this week. He's become somewhat of a meme within the community due to his abundance of videos on the series. XOR XOR, or simply known as Shadow Didi, is a character from Ultimate Custom Night. She's a shadow version of Didi with a name resemblance to Shadow Bonnie, being random letters. She appears on 5020 mode and can summon 6 extra characters, those being Shadow Bonnie, Plus Trap, Nightmare Chica, Bonnet, The Mini Renas, and Lolbit. RWQFSFASXC, also known as Shadow Bonnie, or RXQ for short, is a shadow counterpart of Toy Bonnie that appears within the FNAF series. His first appearance was in FNAF 2, where he would appear in the office, and when looking at him, he would crash your game. His most prominent appearance was in FNAF Special Delivery, where he is guarding the Shadow Remnant. Ian and Brayden Ian and Brayden Cawthon are Scott Cawthon's children. Their exact ages are unknown, however, it was said that they were young during the first game's release, and are at least teenagers during the release of Ultimate Custom Night. Scott has said that he made a bet with one of his sons that he would pay them $20 for every challenge they could beat in Ultimate Custom Night. Apparently, Scott's son played the game for hours trying to beat every challenge in the game. Scott has also featured his sons in the movie, Bible Plays Noah's Ark, as the leading actors. Endo O2 Endo O2s are endoskeletons used in the FNAF 2 era, primarily in the toy animatronics. The withered animatronics were refitted with these endoskeletons in an attempt to refurbish them, which we all know didn't pan out. There's an easter egg in FNAF 2 where an Endo O2 can be seen in the prize corner and the left air vent. In the graphic novels, the robot that Henry uses to kill himself bears a strong resemblance to the Endo O2 model. Showtime Showtime was a cut feature for Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted. In the hub area of the game, there is a Showtime button. In the final game, it does nothing, but it was supposed to open a curtain and the animatronics would perform a song, their actual purpose. This would have been the first time we see the gang perform, aside from a brief clip in the original FNAF trailer. The functionality still remains, but goes unused. This was also the first time Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica would be given voices, even though these voices were scrapped and their new voices would be introduced in the next installments. Shadow Freddy Shadow Freddy, similar to Shadow Bonnie, is a shadowy version of Withered Golden Freddy. He first appeared as an easter egg in FNAF 2. 
He appears in the parts and service room and would crash your game after looking at him. Books. This refers to the numerous Five Nights at Freddy's books. These books range from the books to the graphic novels to the short stories. There's the original book series comprised of The Silver Eyes, The Twisted Ones, and The Fourth Closet. There's the graphic novels based off of those books. There's the Fazbear Fright short stories which have three stories per book. There's also the Freddy Files and the Security Logbook which don't really fit into a category as they're unrelated to the other books. Markiplier. Mark Edward Fishbosh, otherwise known as Markiplier, is a YouTuber personality and gamer. He's been making Let's Play videos since May 26th of 2012 and is one of a select group of YouTubers to have received a diamond play button. He's been named the king of FNAF as he was one of the first to beat 420 mode in FNAF 1 and his first Let's Play video on the first game is the first video that pops up when searching FNAF, with the video also being Mark's most viewed gameplay video with 92 million views. It's me. It's me is a repeated phrase throughout the series, belonging to Golden Freddy. Whenever Golden Freddy appears in FNAF 1, the words It's me will flash on screen. Since we play as Michael Afton in FNAF 1, and Evan Afton possesses Golden Freddy, he's basically saying, It's me. Your brother. It's me can occasionally be seen written on the out of order sign in Pirate's Cove from FNAF 1. 1, 9, 8, 7. This is referring to an easter egg in FNAF 1's custom night, if you put the character's AI levels to 1, 9, 8, and 7 respectively. Trying to start the game with these settings results in a jump scare from Golden Freddy. This was put in by Scott to shut down rumors saying there was a secret in the game if you play with these settings. Scott Cawthon Scott Braden Cawthon is a game developer and the creator of the Five Nights at Freddy's series. He has developed many other indie games, although most of these can no longer be found on his website, scottgames.com. His earlier games, primarily Chipper and Sons Lumber Company, were criticized for the characters looking and moving like creepy animatronics. Scott was about to quit game development before he took the criticism and made Five Nights at Freddy's. He currently resides in Texas with his family. Private Room The Private Room is a secret room in Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. It can be accessed by disobeying Baby's instructions and going to the room on the opposite side of the scooping room. You then enter a minigame where you have to keep entered out of your office, similar to the original games. Surviving the night leads to the fake ending, where Ender found a way out and has come to kill the player. This however is non-canon, and was only a fun mode thrown in. In the custom night update for sister location, the private room is used as the office for the mode. Nose Honk This is a reoccurring joke in the FNAF series, where if you touch the nose of an animatronic, toy, or a poster of them, they will make a honking sound. This can be done with Freddy on the Celebrate poster in FNAF 1, Toy Freddy on the Celebrate poster in FNAF 2, the Freddy on the cartoon poster in FNAF 3, the Freddy plush on the bled in FNAF 4, Adventure Freddy on the title screen in FNAF World, Ennard's mask in Sister Location, Helpy's nose in the office from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, Helpy in Ultimate Custom Night, and Freddy on the title screen of Help Wanted. Golden Freddy Golden Freddy is a mysterious ghost-like entity who takes on the form of a yellow animatronic bear, similar to Freddy. He plays a prominent role in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, although his origins are unknown. He is presumed to have the spirits of Evan Afton, the bite victim, and Cassidy, the vengeful spirit inside of him. He has appeared in every FNAF game except Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted. Leon Riskin Leon Riskin is a sound designer and the current composer of the music for the FNAF series, including FNAF World, Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, and Ultimate Custom Night. He owns his own sound design company, being Ionix Music, and resides in Malot, Israel. The Bite of 87 The Bite of 87 is a notable event in the FNAF timeline where an animatronic bit somebody removing their frontal lobe. The animatronic who caused the bite was thought to have been Mangle due to her broken jaw and jump scare animation where she looks like she's going for the top of your head. As a result of the incidents, animatronics were no longer allowed to wander around the building during the day. JJ JJ, also known as Balloon Girl, is a minor character in the FNAF series. She is a different colored counterpart of Balloon Boy, with a currently unknown origin. She made her first appearance in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 as an easter egg where she would appear under the desk. Her adventure counterpart appears as one of the pilots in the Foxy Fighter minigame from FNAF World. Foxy Singing In FNAF 1, you can sometimes hear Foxy singing. This has somewhat been retconned as Foxy's voice actor in Ultimate Custom Night is not the same as his voice in the original. <laughs> Never underestimate the cunning of a pirate. Or a fox for that matter. Halloween Update 
The Halloween update is a free update for Five Nights at Freddy's 4 that was added on October 30th, 2015. This version adds new cheats, challenges, and gives most things a Halloween theme. However, with the exception of Nightmare Freddy and Nightmare Fredbear, all of the Nightmare animatronics have been replaced. Jacko Bonnie replaces Nightmare Bonnie, Jacko Chica replaces Nightmare Chica, Nightmare Mango replaces Nightmare Foxy, Nightmare Young replaces Nightmare, and Nightmare Balloon Boy replaces Plus Trap in the Fun with Balloon Boy minigame in between each nights. The Living Tombstone Yov Lando, otherwise known as the founder and producer of The Living Tombstone, is an Israeli American musician and YouTuber best known for his original songs on well known video games, with his FNAF music series being one of the most popular playlists on his YouTube channel. His first FNAF song is the most viewed Five Nights at Freddy's video on YouTube, with a grand total of 220 million views. He's also created the songs It's Been So Long, Die in a Fire, I Got No Time, and I Can't Fix You. He no longer creates FNAF songs and hasn't since Sister Location. William Afton William Afton, otherwise known as the Purple Guy, is the co-founder of Fazbear Entertainment as well as the main antagonist of the FNAF series. He was directly and indirectly responsible for numerous incidents, deaths, and tragedies throughout the series, most prominently responsible for the murder of many children. He has created the Sister Location animatronics to capture children. He was obsessed with immortality and would kill children to experiment with them. Of course their souls would go on to possess many animatronics. When William went to dismantle the classic animatronics after finding out that his victims had possessed them, the spirit scared him into a broken down spring bonnie suit, which snapped shut, leaving him trapped in the suit. Now being known as Springtrap, he would remain there until he was found 30 years later for the Fazbear Fright Horror Attraction, which would soon after burn down. However, he escaped and somehow rebuilt his body into Scrap Trap. After him and the remaining haunted animatronics are lured into the pizzeria in FNAF 6, the building is burned down, with all the spirits finally passing on. Except for William. William goes to hell and is then tortured by the spirit of Golden Freddy and all his victims. I'm not going to discuss Glitch Trap as he's kind of his own thing, but we'll get to him later. FNAF 2 is a prequel. This is exactly what it says. This refers to how FNAF 2 comes before FNAF 1 in the timeline. FNAF 2 takes place in 1987, while FNAF 1 takes place in 1993 or 2003. It's a bit unclear and there's contradicting points, but well, nevertheless, FNAF 2 comes before FNAF 1. We know this because 1. Phone Guy is alive and well in FNAF 2, even though he died in FNAF 1. And 2. The withered animatronics are later refurbished into the classic animatronics from FNAF 1. Marionette vs. Puppet This is referring to the debate of whether this animatronic is called the marionette or the puppet. The Funko Pop figure of the character and his description in UCN calls it the marionette. However, everyone in the fandom seems to call it the puppet. Endo 01 looking at the camera This is referring to an easter egg in FNAF 1 where the endoskeleton in the back room will suddenly activate and look into the camera. There is not much else to say about this. Toxic Meter this is a scrap gameplay mechanic from FNAF 2. It was presumed to appear when you put on the Freddy head. The Toximir can still be found in the files of the game, yet it goes unused. Chipper and Sons Lumber Co. Chipper and Sons Lumber Co. is a construction RPG produced by Scott Cawthon before Five Nights at Freddy's. In the game, you play as Tyke, a young beaver who is just starting out in the lumber business who must chop down trees, collect and sell wood, and buy or find various items to make your business easier to run. The game was also pitched to Steam Greenlight, but it was pulled a day later after Scott received harsh criticism regarding the art style and how the characters looked and moved like animatronic mascots. Those same critiques were later used to make Five Nights at Freddy's, as the series we know it today. Troll Games The FNAF series has had many troll games, in part due to Scott being a bit of a prankster. <laughs> the first being his FNAF 3 troll game, which he released claiming that he had been hacked and that he might as well just release the game. The game, however, was just a reskin of one of his previous games, There Is No Pause Button, with the lead character having a Freddy head. He also said that Sister Location was becoming too mature, and that he wanted to fix it. To compensate for this, he released the mature version while saying the real version would come out in a few months. The mature edition was actually just a reskin version of one of his previous games, being Sit and Survive. He had made more following the same presence, but these are his most notable. Scott Drama this is a bit of a controversial topic, and if you want to hear more about it, check out my video on the situation, link in the description. Basically, Scott had donated money to anti-LGBTQ Republicans, and people have doxed him, leaked his address, and have sent him death threats. 
Along with the fact that he wants to spend more time with his children and end all of this drama coming at him, he decided to retire from the FNAF series, handing ownership to someone else. Death Minigames These are minigames that have a chance of appearing after dying in FNAF 2. They take the style of 8-bit Atari-style arcade games, which tell the underlying story of the series. These minigames were the first appearance of the Purple Guy, who we would later know as William Afton. Some of the most notable of these being the Give Gifts, Give Life minigame, where the puppet puts the souls of the missing children into the classic animatronics, Take Cake to the Children, where William Afton murders Charlie Emily outside of a Fazbear establishment, and many other story-related events. Jim Sterling Jim Sterling is a YouTuber and game critic. They had critiqued Scott's game before FNAF, that being Chipper and Son's Lumberco, for having characters that resemble creepy animatronic mascots. We all know that Scott took this ammunition and made FNAF. Jim has made a video on every game up until FNAF World. That was until recently where they made a video surrounding the 2021 Scott Cawthon drama. I am not going to delve into it here, but you know I made a video on this if you want to know. Twisted Chica This is referring to a cut character for the FNAF novel, The Twisted Ones. The Twisted Ones novel artist, Lady Fitzy, posted concept art for a supposed twisted version of Chica. Twisted Chica never appears in the novel, so it makes sense as to why this art was never seen, even though there is an official Funko plush and pop figure based off of the character. Kira Breed Risley Kira Breed Risley is a novelist, screenwriter, and playwriter. She currently works as a staff ghostwriter and editor at Kevin Anderson and Associates. She's best known for writing the trilogy of FNAF novels, with the first novel, Five Nights at Freddy's The Silver Eyes, having become a number one New York Times bestseller. Hub World Secrets this is referring to secrets on the hub world of the Curse of Dreber DLC for FNAF Help Wanted. These can be as simple as bats occasionally flying through the area or loading with the sky being red, which alongside the house on the hill is very reminiscent of FNAF 4's title screen. However, there are also some neat, more noticeable ones, such as the Foxy's pirate ship being dragged under by a kraken or Dreadbear occasionally walking from the lake to the barn on the player's right. Fredbear and UCN Fredbear is a secret antagonist in Ultimate Custom Night. However, the steps to find him are pretty complex. First, you need to set Golden Freddy's AI on 1. Make sure you have no other characters available. Second, stall on the cameras after starting the game and collect Faz coins. After getting 10 Faz coins, head to the prize counter and buy the death coin. You should see Fredbear's hat on the table. After flipping down the tablet, once you see Golden Freddy in the corner, use the death coin. Instead of dying to Golden Freddy, you'll get a unique jump scare. He is voiced by Kellen Goff, who is a recurring voice actor for the series. His voice is deep and gargled, but when edited, is actually saying things. Desera Desera was a digital distribution platform for the Microsoft Windows, Linux, and OS X platforms. Their service was similar to Steam or GameJolt, where distributed games and related media is online. Many independent developers and small companies published their content on Desera, including Scott Cawthon, who published the original Finance of Fridays on there before it was approved for Steam. Desera was later sold to Bad Juju Games, which then filed for bankruptcy in June of 2015. In October 2016, Desera was acquired by the Danish company OnePlay, intending to relaunch Desera. Desera's website spent years being down and is now unrelated to the original Desera. Failed Kickstarter Scott Coffin created a Kickstarter to try and boost production of the first game. He ultimately raised a grand total of, drumroll please, zero dollars and zero cents. Due to him cancelling the Kickstarter early and the fact that nobody knew what a Freddy Fazbear was at the time. Interestingly enough, the description for the game refers to his original name of Freddy Bear, being a play on words of Teddy Bear. Freddy in Women's Bathroom In the first FNAF game, Freddy can hide in the women's bathroom while on his attack route. This led to people thinking the spirit of Freddy might have been a girl, including MatPat's original FNAF theory. We now know this to be not true, as we know Freddy's spirit is Gabriel. Scott voices Phone Guy this refers to how Phone Guy in all his appearances is voiced by Scott himself. This was due to the fact that early on, Scott was the only one working on the series, so there was no voice actors that could have voiced Phone Guy. FNAF Movie The FNAF movies had a long, rocky development. Warner Bros. Pictures announced in April of 2015 that it had acquired the series' film rights, with Gil Keenan set to direct. However, in January 2017, Scott said that due to problems within the movie industry as a whole, the film was met with several delays and roadblocks and was back at square one. Then, in March of that year, Scott tweeted a picture of a director's chair with the name Freddy on it with the Blumhouse Productions logo in the background. This implies that the film had a new production company. Producer Jason Blum confirmed the news two months later, saying that he was excited about working closely with Scott on the adaptation. 
In June 2017, Keenan said that he was no longer directing the film after Warner Bros. Pictures turnaround. It was also announced that in February 2018 that Chris Columbus would direct and write the film, also producing it with Jason Blum and Scott. In August 2018, Coffin announced that the script's first draft was completed and that a second and third film, based off the second and third games respectively, were possible. That month, Jason Blum tweeted that the film was planned for a 2020 release. However, in November of 2018, Scott announced the film's script had been scrapped and the film would be further delayed. In June 2020, Jason Blum said in an interview that the film is in super active development and that it's moving rapidly forward, but that he doesn't want to put a timeline on it. In November 2020, Scott said in a Reddit post that a screenplay had been chosen that filming will start in spring of 2021, around March. It included was a list of scrapped screenplays with a small description of each and why they were ultimately unused. We don't know much about the plot, however we do know that it revolves around Michael Afton, as he called it the Mike storyline in his Reddit post. Sparky Sparky the dog is an iconic FNAF hoax from its early days. In the early days of FNAF 1, someone began to spread rumors about a hidden sixth animatronic named Sparky the dog. Sure enough, screenshots began to crop up on Tumblr. Reportedly, Sparky was broken, only had one arm, and would never attack the player, only appearing occasionally in the backstage doorway. However, it was eventually reeled as a hoax by his creators, Tumblr users Kodaya Bear and Nugan, with all the screenshots being photoshopped. Mangle's Gender This refers to how Mangle's gender is unknown. People would have debates over them and even Scott added fuel to the fire by referring to them with both male and female pronouns. Mangle's design is very feminine with pink colors and long eyelashes, so the majority of people assume Mangle is female. She even appeared in the Ladies Night mode of FNAF 2's Custom Night. However, when the game released, Phone Guy sounded like he was referring to Mangle as either him or them at one point. That, along with a rumor that Scott had stated all the characters were the same gender as their original counterparts, started the initial debate. After this, Scott was asked about Mangle's gender on Steam, with a user asking if they were male or female, to which Scott replied, Yes. Oh, Scott. Ever since, Mangle has had references to both pronouns during every future mention in the series as a nod to this debate, which kept the debate going. CD Plus This is a debugging exploit in the first two FNAF games. By pressing C, D, and plus signs on the keyboard, it makes you skip straight to 6am. The same applies to the second game. The same applies to the second game, the difference being your cursor must be hovering over Freddy's nose on the celebrate poster while pressing the keys. This exploit was removed in the third game and hasn't been seen in any game since then. It's worth noting that several people claim that on the Phantom BB teaser for FNAF 3, you can see the letters C and D on the side of his head if you brighten the image up. This led people to believe that the letters had more significance, but it's never been confirmed. Sister Location takes place underneath FNAF 4. This is referring to a theory that the storage facility we explore in Sister Location is located directly below the FNAF 4 house. There's a lot of evidence for the theory, even if not being confirmed. There's the map in the Funtime Freddy minigame, where some of the layouts shown are supposedly the map from the 8-bit sections of FNAF 4. In the private room, if you type 1, 9, 8, and 7 into the keypad, these three monitors will show different views of the bite victim's room. This can all be explained away by the fact that William Afton, who owns the FNAF 4 house, which is monitoring his kids in their house while working. Obscured Graphics Obscured graphics refers to sprites throughout the series that are never fully seen in the game, but can be seen fully in the files. Some examples include Springtrap's walking animation in FNAF 3 where his legs don't move, or in UCM when some of Balloon Boy and JJ's features are missing. Plus Trap Prize Jump Scare This refers to how on rare occasions when earning a prize and help wanted, you'll be jump scared by Plus Trap. You'll be sent to the game over screen, but the stage will occur on will still be counted as beaten. As far as I know, this easter egg can only occur once per save file, but I've never tested it, so take it with a grain of salt. NFTs The Scott drama actually wasn't the first time Scott got cancelled this year. He got cancelled earlier this year because people had found out that he was giving a license to make FNAF NFTs. For those who aren't aware, NFTs are like digital collectibles you get through Bitcoin. These NFTs are extremely controversial because they are bad for the environment. Scott was unaware of this when he gave the license, so he instantly withdrew it after the fandom kept telling him they were a bad idea. Mr. Hippo's Long Stories This refers to Mr. Hippo in Ultimate Custom Night. In UCN, when you die, most of the time the animatronic who killed you will say something. If you die by Mr. Hippo, he will tell you a long story about himself and Orville the Elephant, and a photo of him will slowly appear on screen. The funny thing is, you can't skip this. 
Even if you exit the game and come back, he will still be there until he finishes his story. S-A-V-E-T-H-E-M S-A-V-E-T-H-E-M, otherwise known as Save Them, is one of the death minigames that can be played in FNAF 2 after getting killed by the animatronics. The minigame takes place at the FNAF 2 Pizzeria. The player controls Withered Freddy by using the WASD keys and will have to follow the puppet. Once arriving in a certain room with the puppet, the game abruptly cuts to static and ends. The player can choose not to follow the puppet and instead receive an identical ending by encountering Golden Freddy or by touching any of the five dead bodies strewn around the map. While the player is walking, a robotic voice can be heard spelling out S-A-V-E-T-H-E-M. Very rarely during this minigame, William Afton will appear at the end of the room the player has entered. Afton will follow Withered Freddy until you're coming into contact with him. Blue Static will then cover the screen, flashing the words, You can't, at the bottom left corner of the screen. Puppet Hallucinations This is referring to after the puppet comes out of the box, but before he kills you. In this short time span, you can see them flashing on the main hall camera. It will either be their face or them floating in midair. Funko Leaks This is referring to when the global toy manufacturing company Funko this is referring to when the global toy manufacturing company Funko leaked products related to FNAF Security Breach, which we had not seen at the time. Funko had posted their lineup of the upcoming toys on their Instagram, with the Security Breach characters also in that list. The thing is, this is before the characters' names were revealed. Candy Cadet Stories This refers to the stories that Candy Cadet tells you in FNAF 6. Candy Cadet has three stories that he will tell you after he gives you a candy. The possibility of hearing a story is very difficult and takes a fond memory of the color schemes that quickly flash on him. There is no exact color scheme that you must follow to get the story, but there is, however, one way that helps memorize the schemes. After he tells you to come back for a story, the color schemes will stop flashing and have a pause for a very short moment. All of his stories will have a similar motive of death slash destruction of five things, as well as five things being melted into one. This could possibly be related to the murders of the five children, the five members of the Afton family, the five animatronics forming Eddard, or most likely, William melting the classic animatronics together to make the Funtime animatronics. Baby's Blue Eyes This is referring to how Baby had blue eyes before she was possessed by Elizabeth Afton. In the Baby Ice Cream minigame, she has blue eyes, but in sister location, she has green eyes. This is due to the fact that Elizabeth has green eyes and possesses Baby. 3, 9, 5, 2, 4, 8. This is a number used most prominently in FNAF 3. It appears in the Night 3 minigame and you need it for the good ending. If you put the code into a part of the wall panels in the office, you can access the Stage 01 minigame. The number is actually a hexadecimal code for a greenish color, but what you might not know is the number backwards is actually another hexadecimal code, which is the exact shade of purple that Purple Guy is in the minigames. Fifth Child in the Give Gifts Give Life minigame, right before you place the last head in the Golden Freddy jump scare, a fifth child will pop up in the middle of the screen. They will only appear for a split second and can be presumed to be Golden Freddy's spirit due to the jump scare. Big Bug Big Bug was a YouTuber and gamer. I say was because he hasn't posted a video in a long time. He was the first person to beat 420 mode in the original Five Nights at Freddy's, and he was the reason Scott added a third star on the menu for beating the mode. His last video was a FNAF World speculation video which was 4 years ago, so suffice it to say, his channel is pretty dormant. Paper Pals The Paper Pals are a group of 3 paper plate dolls, two of them representing one of the animatronics, those being Freddy and Bonnie. The third is known as Paper Buddy, who doesn't seem to have a parallel. Some people thought he was Balloon Boy, however this is only speculation. They are placed in the Party Room 4 in FNAF 2, but they also have a chance of appearing in the office. They also have a chance of appearing in FNAF 3's office. Springtrap in the newspaper When you beat FNAF 3's Nightmare Mode, you see a newspaper stating how Fazbear's Fright burnt down. If you brighten up the image, you can see Springtrap behind the Freddy figure. Some fans find this a bit strange though. Did the photographer not see Springtrap standing there? Why is Springtrap's face so close to the ground? Why can his face only be seen while brightening up the image if he's so close to the Freddy figure? There's a lot of really weird problems with this, but let's not dwell on it. Handprint on Freddy's face this is referring to a supposed handprint on classic Freddy's face. Fans feel this has something to do with the supposed rules, where rule 6 is don't touch Freddy. Some people thought that this handprint was supposedly from the victim from the bite of 87, meaning that Freddy caused it. However, this was speculation and is most likely not true. Fazbear Fanverse Initiative 
The Fazbear Fanverse Initiative is a collaboration by Scott Cawthon and creators of popular Five Nights at Freddy's fan games. This project is, in Scott's own words, a giant collaboration involving several fan game creators who have made some of the most popular fan games over the years here in the community. It's a project that's designed to invest into those franchises, give it back to the developers, and hopefully bring new entries to those franchises as well. The fan games in the initiative are Five Nights at Candy's 4 by Emil Mako, The Joy of Creation Ignited Collection by Nixon, Pop Goes Evergreen by Kane Carter, One and at Plump D's 3 by Jonochrome Jonathan, and Five Nights at Freddy's Plus, which is a remake of the first game by Finsnum. Scott said that these games would get mobile ports and maybe even some merchandise. It is unknown of due to Scott's retirement if the Fazbear Fanverse initiative will continue, or even is still happening. Rare Boot Images This is referring to images that can appear when you boot up the second or third games. In the second game, Withered Freddy appears rarely when starting the game, Withered Foxy appears rarely when starting a night, and Toy Bonnie appears rarely when dying. In FNAF 3, you can see three images of Springtrap pulling back his mask to reveal William Afton's corpse inside. Toy Chica in Office Similar to how Toy Bonnie appears in the office in FNAF 2, Toy Chica was also intended to, even having a new render for it. It ultimately went unused, but fans have added it back into the game. Lady Fitzy Amashi Segativeri, otherwise known as Lady Fitzy Online, was an official artist hired by Scott Coffin to draw characters for the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. She is known for making character art for the novel trilogy and also did some art for the games like Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night, along with another artist being Pinky Pills. She's also been involved with a lot of controversy. She said many transphobic things on Reddit and has also drawn many over-sexualized characters. She also wrote a fan fiction of William Afton murdering and molesting the missing children. She no longer draws for this series as I suppose Scott fired her. Puppet in FNAF 1 Location In FNAF 2, when you first put up the game as well as at the end of the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th nights, you will have to watch these dreamlike cutscenes. In the cutscenes, you play as Classic Freddy in the FNAF 1 location, with Bonnie and Chica beside you. On the final cutscene, Bonnie and Chica are looking at you and the puppet is following your head movements. As you all know, the puppet wasn't in the first game, however he would exist story-wise, so it makes sense that he could be there. Vanessa Mask in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC of Help Wanted, Vanessa's mask can be found in the core maze by collecting all of the keys and going back to the start of the level. There will be a basement door that after unlocking the fifth key will open when you're near it. Inside the cellar there will be a single rabbit mask on the table. Putting it on will end the minigame. You can then find the mask in the prize corner at any time. If you've completed both the main story and the DLC, you can get special dialogue by looking at the Glitch Spring Bonnie plush. While you can't hear Glitch Trap, you can hear what Vanessa is saying in response. 5th Power Usage Bar In FNAF 1, if you close both doors, turn on one of the lights, and go on the cameras, a 5th Power Bar will pop up for a split second before disappearing. This is because the light turns off after you put the camera up. Fred Bear and Friends 1983 In the nightly minigames from FNAF 4 on the television in the living room, sometimes a show called Fred Bear and Friends will appear. The show apparently had Fred Bear, Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, Freddy, and maybe Spring Bonnie? He doesn't appear on the show and screens, but he does appear normally alongside Fredbear, so I'm not overly sure. Withered Bonnie's White Eyes This refers to how in FNAF 2, Withered Bonnie's eye color is inconsistent. His eyes are usually red, except for in Party Room 1, the left air vent, and weirdly enough, the title screen, in which they are white. Some fans have speculated that this is either because the light is shining really brightly to making them appear white, or this is being done by the spirit inside of him, similar to how Freddy and other animatronics can have glowing eyes when appearing ghostly. My friend who created this iceberg, Natter John, thinks it's because his eyes are red when he goes into attack mode, i.e. when he sees Jeremy, like when he's in the hallway or in front of him in the office. It's a pretty good theory and I do believe this is most likely the reason. Button Inconsistencies This refers to how Balloon Boy and Nightmare Fredbear's buttons constantly change colors. They are either black, white, or one of each. Unlike Withered Bonnie's eyes, there is no explanation at all for this. Lives This is referring to a cut mechanic from the first three FNAF games. In the early gameplay footage shown on Scott Coffin's YouTube channel, you can see a Stickman graphic along with a number one. In the second and third games, the Stickman appears in the files alongside this Lives graphic. Smike Michael Shevich, otherwise known as Smike, is a Canadian gaming YouTuber who made many how-to, 
facts, theories, and top 10 style videos based on Five Nights at Freddy's. Smike's channel started in 2011, mostly consisting of Skyrim how-tos and quick playthroughs. Throughout the years, he began doing top 10 videos, again, mostly about Skyrim. In August 2014, FNAF came out on Steam. Due to the game's strange, eerie, and unsolved plot, many were left wondering about the game. That's when Smike began gathering information on the game and making top 10 videos. From that point on, his subscriber count skyrocketed. However, somewhere around September 27, 2015, all of his top 10 facts videos were deleted by YouTube due to his use of Five Nights at Freddy's fan art in his videos. As some artists didn't like him using their art in his videos, several artists wrote a copyright material on his videos, and the reports were successful. Smike made a public apology video about him placing all the names of the artists in the description. In 2016, all the top 10 facts videos were re-uploaded, with all the fan replaced with different screens from the game franchise. However, the damage was done. Smike, up until quite recently, was inactive, with his most recent video being uploaded on September 21st, 2020. In January of 2021, Smike briefly returned to make a live stream of him playing Five Nights at Freddy's, but he hasn't been seen since then. Drowning in the Lake In FNAF World, one of the main mechanics is going between glitch worlds. If you find a glitching object and touch it, you can be taken to an 8-bit glitching world where you can get to another part of the regular map. However, you can find another glitching object in this glitch world where you can go into another glitch world. Do this a couple more times and you'll reach an 8-bit red lake with someone named Old Man Consequences fishing. If you walk into the lake, you will drown and start falling. When brought back to the menu, a trophy of Freddy's sprite is unlocked. You can also be brought to the lake and drown in said lake in UCN if Old Man Consequences is sent to 1. Doing so will unlock the Freddy trophy in FNAF World if your save file is empty. Rick Astley Rick Astley is the man behind the slaughter! No, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. But this entry isn't a joke. In the ending of Sister Location, when Michael Afton looks at himself in the mirror after being scooped, his silhouette is seemingly that of Rick Astley. The exact image of him hasn't been found yet, but it is seemingly him judging by the shoulders, head shape, and that classic 80s hair. Bad Designs for the Fun Times This refers to the early designs for Funtime Freddy and Foxy that can be found in Sister Location's Extras menu. It's worth noting that Funtime Freddy didn't originally have the bonbon hand puppet and he was more of a reddish pink as opposed to a purpler pink. On the contrary, Funtime Foxy was more purplish than pink in her beta design. Help me. This refers to how the sounds that Springtrap makes when he moves around in FNAF 3 sound like he's saying, help me. This however is just a coincidence as the noise Springtrap makes are actually alpaca noises with a lower pitch and echo effect. Illusion Discs Illusion Discs are objects introduced in the novels. They are flat discs about the size of a half dollar coin. They were created by William Afton for his animatronics. These discs employ five high pitch frequencies that constantly change. The noise is only detected by the subconscious, which becomes overwhelmed with the patterns. This causes the listener's mind to perceive something as not what it really is. A side effect of these frequencies is feeling sick. They are used on the twisted animatronics to either make them appear super cute and cuddly, or really scary looking. It's revealed that once a character in the novel breaks the discs, the twisted animatronics are actually just bare endoskeletons. They are also apparently used in the games as well, as people suspect that the nightmare animatronics are using these discs to make them appear scarier. People think that William is using these discs to make his son fear the animatronics to keep him safe. You can also seemingly see one of these illusion discs when repairing Funtime Freddy in Sister Location. Mediocre Melody Whispers In Ultimate Custom Night, whenever one of the mediocre melodies speaks, a whisper can be heard echoing what they are saying. The voice could be baby, but it's hard to tell as it's so quiet. Here's an example. We've only just begun. I will never let you leave. I will never let you rest. Night 8 Night 8 is a glitch in the first two FNAF games, but most famously in FNAF 2. Upon completing nights 1-7, to seven, if the player scrolls their mouse over all the options on the main menu rapidly, players can see the night under the continue option flicker between night 5 and night 8. This has led people to believe that a secret night 8 level exists, however this is just a glitch. This is because the night 8 option isn't generated on the main menu because the game's update loop isn't running fast enough to match the mouse scrolling through the options repeatedly. Buff Helpy Buff Helpy is an image meme within the Daco and FNAF communities. The image is just Helpy's head photoshopped onto a muscular man. 
He first appeared as one of the many memes in Docco's meme review video, FNAF Meme Review 2.0. He has since then appeared in every following meme review video, with people making even more creative versions of him. Yellow Bear Yellow Bear was Golden Freddy's original name, as shown by the files of the first game. The first use of the name Golden Freddy was by Markiplier, and since then has supposedly stuck, first appearing in FNAF 2's Custom Night. Jack Black Jack Black is an American actor, singer, and songwriter. He has appeared in numerous films and television shows. He's made a couple of honestly amazing TikToks related to FNAF. He's sung the Five Nights at Freddy's song by The Living Tombstone, claimed to be a mofo spring trap, and has even played the games and reviewed them. Toxic Song This refers to an unused attack in FNAF World. It most likely would have poisoned enemies, as with Toxic Bite, and may have been usable by Phantom Mangle and Springtrap, since their fixed counterparts, Funtime Foxy and Spring Bonnie, are the only characters with Cosmic Song. Bootleg Copies This refers to several unofficial and quite awful free FNAF games you can find on the internet. They are basically choppy, low frame rate, and just overall worse versions of the games. They can be found on those websites where you can play millions of questionably legal games. Curse Haunting this refers to an unused ship from FNAF World. Presumably, it would have used haunting on all enemies from the start of the battle, or else a Ghost Freddy would appear and stun an enemy occasionally. The chip may have been replaced with the green chip Quick Start Party, which stuns enemies for the first few seconds of a battle. Freddy Bear This refers to Freddy's original name, Freddy Bear. We already mentioned this, but this is obviously a play on Teddy Bear. We've already said that the Kickstarter for the original game housed his name, but so did somewhere else. The Steam page for the first game still calls Freddy, Freddy Bear. This actually might have been where Fredbear's name came from. Purple Bonnie This refers to common misconceptions that Bonnie is purple. This is because in the FNAF 1 trailer, the yellow and orange stage light make him appear purple. However, Bonnie is blue, as shown by literally every other iteration of Bonnie. FNAF World Enemies on the Desk This refers to how three FNAF World enemies can appear on your desk in Ultimate Custom Night. These enemies are Tangle, White Rabbit, and Bounce Pot. This along with the Old Man Consequences Easter Egg confirm that FNAF World and UCN are connected. Ballora Looking Through the Window This refers to an unused image in Sister Location. The image is of Ballora with her faceplates open in the Ballora Gallery. It is unknown why it is unused, maybe because no one ever comes up to the glass in the primary control module? FNAF 1 was meant to be Scott's last game. After his previous games like The Desolate Hope and Chipper and Sons had small success but harsh criticism and not a lot of revenue, Scott was going to quit game development altogether. Of course, everyone knows the story of how Scott took the critiques, made FNAF, yada yada yada. Sister Location Blueprints These are secret blueprints that can be found in the extras menu of Sister Location. They are the blueprints of the four main animatronics and reveal many things such as their features, weight, and height. Wait, what? Why are they all six feet? Baby is seven feet? Why? Why are they so tall? I, I know they're supposed to capture kids, but geez, William, settle yourself. Uh, also, Funtime Freddy is shown to have a child inside his stomach, so creepy. Scott is self-taught. Even though Scott Cawthon went to school for animation, he self-taught himself game design when he was a child. His first game was called Doofus in 1994 when he was 16. Movie Ripoffs There are two recent movies that fans feel are based off of Five Nights at Freddy's. When Warner Bros. lost the FNAF movie rights, they apparently took the script and made a new movie. The film, called the Banana Splits movie based off of the Hanna-Barbera characters of the same name, was about these animatronics killing people. It was a fine enough movie, but the parallels to FNAF were pretty apparent. Then, there was Willy's Wonderland by Nicolas Cage, which is an even more obvious FNAF ripoff, because it's about a security guard exploring an abandoned family amusement center with evil animatronics. There was even a controversy where they had to change some characters due to them resembling FNAF characters, such as Barry Bear, Pirate Pete, and Regina Rabbit, who were similar to Freddy, Foxy, and Bonnie, respectively. Yendo Yendo is an endoskeleton found in Sister Location. Despite his small role in the main game, he also appears in Sister Location's Custom Night. Yendo is very similar to Funtime Freddy's endoskeleton, as seen in the making of Freddy section in the extras menu. Yendo, however, has three differences. A lack of inner faceplates, 
both hands and yellow irises rather than Funtime Freddy's blue. When using the flash beacon in the Funtime Auditorium in Night 3, the player has a very rare chance to encounter Yendo instead of Funtime Foxy. Yendo maintains eye contact with the player and will not be able to attack them. However, if the player fails to use the beacon while encountering him, Funtime Foxy will still attack them regardless. Fright Dome This refers to the FNAF Fright Dome attraction at Circus Circus in Las Vegas. It was opened on September 30th, 2016 and featured real-life fabric recreations of Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica from the first game. Development of this attraction took 3-4 to four months, which was officially confirmed by an employee. Inside this interactive haunted house, guests will be given a tour of Freddy's Pizzeria by the on-duty security guard and must have their eyes peeled for the animatronics. The attraction was changed every day that it was open to feature new jump scares, animatronics at new locations, and etc. After you would finish the attraction, you would then be able to take a photo with Scott Cawthon. Mike This refers to a sprite in the files of FNAF 2. It's some kind of 8-bit sprite and no one knows anything about this. The file is called Mike, which could be referring to Mike Schmidt from FNAF 1 or Michael Afton, but who knows. Princess Quest Princess Quest is a special minigame from the mobile port of Help Wanted. Occasionally, a glitch pattern will appear on the objects at the prize counter. To unlock Princess Quest, the player must zoom in on one of these glitching objects. Afterwards, the screen will fade to black and fade back to the level select with everything unlocked, along with Princess Quest shown on the right monitor. The player starts at a room with a door they can't open, and they have to light all four torches in the next room to open the door in that room. The player will then end in a room full of floating glitch trap heads that will attack them. After lighting those torches, they can now go into the next room and get the key, and glitch trap blockers will block the door and attack the player if it gets too close. FNAF 3 Cupcake The FNAF 3 Cupcake, otherwise known as the Phantom Cupcake, is a cupcake that most people don't know about. He will appear in cams 6, 2, 4, and 8. If you click a Phantom Cupcake, it'll disappear. You'll have to click every cupcake to get the Chica's Party minigame, and by extension, get the good ending. Phantom Mangle and Happiest Day Absent from the Extras Phantom Mangle is the only Phantom animatronic to not appear on the Extras menu. This is most likely due to the fact that no complete images of Phantom Mangle exist. Its appearance in the office is only a disembodied head, and its appearance on Camo 4 is drastically cropped and shadowed. The Happiest Day minigame is also the only extra minigame which doesn't appear in the Extras menu. Argumentative Standards Elevation Passive Heights in Sister Location, if you take the ghost laugh sound you get after the angsty teen tells you to zap Ballora and speed it up 300%, it isn't a laugh at all, rather a random series of words. Those being argumentative, standards, elevation, passive, heights. As to what it means, I really don't know. Coffee Coffee is one of Scott's characters from one of his previous games, The Desolate Hope. He was later added in the 1.2 update of FNAF World. He can be unlocked if the player beats FNAF 57, Freddy in Space, without collecting any upgrades. He has a coffee machine that carries a coffee pot with a handle attached. He has two arms and two legs attached to it, an eye with four prongs on the top to resemble eyelashes, as well as a long antenna on the top of his head. His most recent appearance was in Help Wanted, where he can appear as an easter egg. BB Laughing Coco Melon. This refers to a video showing that in the children's show Coco Melon, a child can be heard laughing, the same laugh that Balloon Boy uses. <laughs> this is because Balloon Boy's laugh is a stock sound effect. Camera Flipping. This refers to a glitch in the first game. When Bonnie or Chica have gotten into your office, if you flip the camera up and down during the jump scare, you can prolong your death. This can be done for the rest of the night if you're skilled enough. Mini Arena's Spell Out Baby This refers to a theory that on Ballora's extra menu screen, the Mini Arena's hands and feet correspond to the letter spelling out baby. I can kinda see it, but the right leg on the last one isn't used on the Y, even though the right leg is used on the other letters, so... I mean, I can kinda see it, but it also kinda feels like a stretch. Bonbon bon in the Vent This refers to a teaser for Sister Location's Custom Night. In the teasers, a Biddy Bab and Bonbon bon can be seen crawling in the vent. However, Bonbon bon doesn't appear in the vent during the finished custom night. Roxo 1987 Roxo 1987 is a YouTuber and editor. You might not know his name, but you definitely know his work. He created the Grey Puppet Hoax, Shadow Bonnie Jump Scare Hoax, 
and most famously, the Purple Guy animatronic hoax. He's made many fake hoaxes and other FNAF related videos. However, he hasn't been active since 9 months ago, so his channel might be dormant. UCN Original Roster This refers to cut characters from Ultimate Custom Night. These characters were Adventure End 001, The Freddles, Bucket Bob, Number 1 Crate, and Mr. Kandu. The Freddles became a part of Nightmare Freddy, and Bucket Bob, Number 1 Crate, and Mr. Kandu were combined into trash in the game. Lolbit Mask This refers to how in Sister Location, the Entered Mask and the Primary Control Module will sometimes be replaced with a Lolbit Map with glowing eyes. FNAF 3 Map is Anim Dude This refers to how if you take the FNAF 3 Map and flip it upside down, it resembles Scott Cawthon's avatar, Anim Dude. Ennard's Eyebrows This refers to how sometimes Ennard is missing his eyebrows. They appear most of the time like in his jump scare animation, however, in the extras menu of Sister Location, his early UCN photo, and even the Funko action figure, Ennard is missing his right eyebrow. It is unknown why this happens. Cut Voices This is referring to the scrap voices planned for Freddy and Toy Bonnie in Ultimate Custom Night. Freddy was planned to be voiced by Kellen Goff, the voice actor for Funtime Freddy and Molten Freddy. Toy Bonnie was planned to be voiced by Stephanie Belinda Quinn, the voice actor for Dee Dee. Freddy's recorded voice lines went on to be used by Fredbear, albeit heavily distorted. Toy Bonnie's lines, however, are a mystery because there is no documentation of what his voice lines would have been like if they were ever recorded. Puppet in Office This refers to how there's an image in the files of FNAF 2 of the puppet on strings appearing in the office. It was most likely cut because the puppet only appears in the prize corner and then jumps out of the hallway. There'd be no point of him to appear in the office. Epic Surfing Vids Epic Surfing Viz is a YouTuber and hoax extraordinaire. He's made so many FNAF hoaxes and edits, such as the Balloon Girl jump scare, security cameras in FNAF 4, Phantom Money jump scare, and the list goes on and on. However, his most famous hoax was the Mysterious Purple Figure video. He hasn't posted in 4 years, so his channel is dormant. Bonnie Running This refers to how in the FNAF 1 trailer, Bonnie can be seen running. This could have been just for the trailer or asked to not show Foxy yet. Or this could have meant that Bonnie could have been the one running instead of Foxy. FNAF 1 Foxy and FNAF 2 This refers to a teaser released on Scott's website in the lead up to FNAF 2. It shows a purple curtain with Foxy and Mangle behind it. This could have meant that Foxy would have been in FNAF 2, however this is most likely false. It's either because he wanted the original Foxy in the teaser as to ease people into this new game with new designs, or he just didn't have the Wizard Foxy model ready yet. Beta Nightmare Fredbear and Help Wanted trailer this refers to how in the Help Wanted trailer, Nightmare Fredbear appears for a split second, and when he does, his colors are wrong. His colors are seemingly that of Nightmare Freddy's. This was, however, most likely an error. Autobiography of a Yogi Autobiography of a Yogi is an autobiography of Paramahansa Yoganda, first published in 1946. During Night 5's phone call of FNAF 1, this can be heard. If you reverse it, it is a section of the autobiography. This paragraph talks about how plants, people, and metals share the same life force. This could be referring to how the animatronics are possessed by ghosts, but that's just speculation. Most people couldn't make out what the paragraph was saying, but a lot of people seemed to hear the joy of creation. The actual sentence is the joy of creative service. However, the joy of creation thing went on to inspire the popular fan game, The Joy of Creation, by Nixon. Golden Cupcake The Golden Cupcake is a yellow colored cupcake that only appears in FNAF 3. He can occasionally replace the Toy Bonnie drawing on Cam 4. Judging by its official render image found on page 83 of the Freddy Files, the Golden Cupcake is merely the original cupcake's model but with yellow frosting. On the same page, a recipe for Chica's Golden Cupcake Pizza can be seen, but I don't think they're related. Tell anyone about this and I cut your throat. On very rare occasion when playtesting the Fruit Punch Clown in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, he will say, Tell anyone about this and I cut your throat. Instead of, Fruit Punch for everyone. Cancelled due to leaks. 
This refers to a teaser on scottgames.com in the lead up to Sister Location. Many people thought this teaser meant that something had leaked from the game and that Scott was cancelling Sister Location. This however was not the case. If you brighten up the image, it tells the story of how Circus Baby's Pizza World was supposedly closed on its first day of maintenance due to gas leaks. I am not going to delve into the lore, but we all know that's not what happened. <coughs> Logbook Chica Logbook Chica is a minor antagonist of the third story in Fazbear Frights, Gumdrop Angel. She's a yellow chicken with a texture resembling fire damage. Her right arm and legs are deteriorated as well as the bottom half of her torso. She also seems to have the structure of classic Chica but has an endoskeleton from FNAF 2. Her eyes are either looking to the left or just missing, though it's difficult to tell. The top part of her beak is missing, exposing her endoskeleton mouth and teeth. Her first and at the time only visual appearance was at the end of the update of Freddy Files, however she would later appear in Gumdrop Angel. She appears when the protagonist Hudson attempts to escape Fazbear's Fright. After a number of animatronic heads block the vent, a Chica head comes down after. However, this Chica is an entire animatronic, albeit heavily damaged. The Chica grabs Hudson's leg as he tries to escape the building. He tries to fight back, but he hears his crushed Faith's voice saying, I like you. Hudson fights back once again and makes them fall out of the vent. Hudson lands on the floor while Chica falls into a pile of animatronic parts. The parts rip Chica to pieces, leaving only yellow fur. FNAF 3 Night 7 This refers to an unused graphic in FNAF 3. The graphic is of the beginning of Night 7. In the final game, Night 7 just appears in the menu as a nightmare mode, as opposed to having a custom night like all the other games. Bear of Revenge Fukushin no Kuma, otherwise known as Bear of Revenge in English, are animated anime-like segments in Ultimate Custom Night. A new episode is shown once you reach a certain point milestone. Each cutscene initially follows Freddy, dressed as a samurai, narrating the validity of his battles against Foxy, while lamenting his current punishment for the week before rebounding and plotting revenge. The scene then transitions to Foxy in his dojo, gleefully remarking on the inevitability of Freddy's retaliation and declaring that he will be ready, while Mangle hangs from the ceiling in comments. All of the cutscenes tell their story via subtitles, as the dialogue is entirely spoken in Japanese. In addition, none of the dialogue matches the subtitles. The relationship between this Freddy and Foxy is theorized to be symbolizing Henry, Emily, and William Afton's relationship. Screws, Bolts, and Hairpins this refers to a magazine in the FNAF series, with its first appearance being in Sister Location. On Night 1, Han Unit says the technician job for Sister Location was listed in the magazine. It can also be seen in the FNAF Survival Logbook. On page 4, which is the chapter marker, you can see Foxy reading a magazine called Screws, Bolts, and Hairprints. I honestly don't really know what this means, but I had seen one Reddit post that noticed all these objects hold things together. Screws and bolts hold machines together, and hairpins hold hair together. Bonnie and Chica Height Oversight This refers to how in the party room of FNAF 1, Chica appears to tower over Bonnie. This is definitely a mistake because they are roughly the same height in every other appearance. It could be a perspective thing, however they're seemingly right beside each other so I'm not really sure. Shadow BB Shadow BB is an infamous FNAF hoax. I can't find the original poster but I do remember seeing the image back in the day. He was said to be exclusive to the mobile ports of FNAF 2. The hoax is of a shadowy balloon boy with white accents. This obviously isn't in the game, and that's all I really have to say about it. Nightmare JJ This was an early FNAF 4 hoax that came out right after the Halloween DLC was published. If you recall, Plus Trap is replaced by Nightmare BB in the DLC, so most hadn't overly seen him yet. The hoax showed an edited Nightmare BB with different colors and eyelashes. This hoax was actually made by fellow YouTuber GoMotion. She is super talented at edits and you should definitely sub to her, link in the description. Molten Freddy Blueprint This refers to a blueprint found in the files of FNAF 6. It shows Molten Freddy, which as a reminder is a mix of Ballora, Funtime Freddy, and Funtime Foxy. It lists the remaining animatronic security tags as being active. I, I, I guess not Bon Bon though, I don't know if he was like possessed or not or if he was separate from Funtime Freddy, but I, I guess he's not there. Anyway, this is also one of the first mentions of Remnant, which would become super important, and the first mention of Paragraph 4, which I'm not going to delve into as I'm not fully sure what it means. The characters' names were originally placeholders. This refers to how Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy were just temporary names for the characters to be replaced later. However, Scott had grown attached to these names and decided to keep them as their names, and I'm so glad he did. They're just the perfect names for the characters. Bilge Rat Bilge Rat refers to the lowest rank you can possibly get in the Pirate Ride minigame in Curse of Dreadbear. 
If you get this rank, you'll be jump scared by Captain Foxy, which is the only way you'll get jump scared by Captain Foxy. The reason this is so low is that most players probably wouldn't see this without trying to get it on purpose. Bonnie's Guitar Copyright This refers to how Bonnie's original guitar got changed due to copyright. Bonnie's original guitar was a Gibson Flying V. The guitar was chosen and it had a very iconic 80s vibe, and this guitar would go on to be used by Toy Bonnie and Rockstar Bonnie. However, the company of the guitar, Gibson Guitars, tried to sue Scott for using them. They also tried to sue Funko as they had made a fake Bonnie guitar toy. Scott obliged and the guitar was changed in every game post Help Wanted, including the console and mobile ports of FNAF 1, 2, and Pizzeria Simulator. Funko also stopped selling the guitar, and in any future merch, toys, and whatever would have this new guitar design. The funny thing is that in 2018, the FNAF Monopoly released, in which case the guitar was actually the new guitar, not the old one, so we should have seen this coming. He was here. This refers to the name of the Mangle Sprite in the files of FNAF 2. The sprite appears in the Save Them minigame, which also features William Afton. The he was here definitely refers to Afton being there. This may imply that Mangle witnessed one of Afton's murders, if we disregard the theory that Mangle is Susie's dog. Another FNAF fan game open source. Another FNAF fan game open source was a fan game created by Fiznum. It was shown and advertised as a FNAF 2 remake or remaster, even using models from Help Wanted. Even though Scott is fine with fan games, this infringes too much on the original and he requested GameDuel to take the game down for being too much of competition to FNAF 2. Even though Scott was totally justified in his takedown, as it's offering a free alternative to FNAF 2, people have questioned his decision from a moral standpoint. However, this drama all blew over when Scott commissioned Fiznum to make FNAF Plus, a FNAF 1 remake as part of the Fazbear fan version initiative. Sister Location MA We already talked about this in the Ultimate FNAF Iceberg Part 1, which you should check out if you didn't see it, but I'll cover it here again. Sister Location MA was a troll game by Scott in the lead up to Sister Location. Scott had said that Sister Location was becoming more adult than he had hoped for, and he was trying to make it less mature. He said that he would still release the first night as Sister Location MA on Game Jolt for free, but encouraged fans to wait for the game when it was fixed. The MA was actually just one of Scott's previous games, but the main character had a Freddy head. Another hilarious prank from good old Scotty C. Hidden Bitty Babs and Mini Renas This refers to how Bitty Babs and Mini Renas can appear in some pretty strange spots. They can appear in Michael's home or in his popcorn, in the control module, in the elevator, and the control room. It is unknown if these easter eggs are canon or not, due to the mini arenas appearing in the popcorn, meaning they escape sister location. Blurred Newspaper Text This refers to on most of the newspapers in the game, there is blurred text on the outside of the main circled topic. The blurred text is actually random facts that Scott wrote. Some of them reveal facts that we didn't know, such as that the characters' names were placeholders, but a lot of it was just jokes. Beta Control Module This refers to an early design of the control module in sister location's extras menu. The most notable difference is how the vents were originally going to be a bunch of steel bars instead of, well, vents. Unused Puppet Frame This refers to an unused frame in FNAF 3 of the puppet's face. It might be a higher quality version of the last frame of his FNAF 2 jump scare, but I'm not sure. This is in the files along with the other puppet files from FNAF 2. FNAF 2 was meant to release in 2015. This refers to how in the first teaser for FNAF 2 with Withered Freddy, the date in the bottom says 2015. This would have meant that FNAF 2 would have released in 2015 as opposed to 2014. We all know that Scott being the madman he is, released the game early. Another joke by Scotty C. Well, I guess not a joke, more of like a like a surprise. So like, an, I guess another surprise from Scotty C, I guess. Bonbon bon and Yendo Plush. These two plushes are two rumored slash fake plushies that had very similar circumstances. For those who aren't aware, the Sister Location Plus set only had a Bonnet plush. However, plushes started showing up of a GameStop exclusive Bonbon bon plush. However, these were mostly just a color edited Bonnet plush. There was also a rumored Yendo plush that was a Best Buy exclusive, however there are no photos of him, meaning he's most likely not real. FNAF in Real Life This refers to a series of images that supposedly show FNAF in real life. I know you've all seen these one and I feel a lot of nostalgia for some of these, but here we go. There is this one which was supposed to be Foxy, this real life Bonnie animatronic, this puppet looking thing, Foxy running down the hall, and, of course, this image. 
Everyone believed this was the real life location, even though it was a little suspicious as there's no Freddy branding and it looks like just a regular old pizza place, which it was. This was obviously a hoax. However, the real location was called Papa's Pizza Parlor in Oregon. Rhymery. Rhymery is a Twitch streamer and was the first person to beat 50-20 mode on Ultimate Custom Night. He beat it on July 8th, 2018. I'll leave his Twitch channel in the YouTube channel in the description. Cancelled Theme Park Ride. This is referring to the cancelled FNAF Dark Ride. I don't know if it was cancelled or not, but this entry seems to say so, so I'll stick with it. It was being created by Sally Dark Rides and was supposed to explore Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. You would ride in a golf cart of some sort and explore the many locations, including the office, Pirate's Cove with Foxy, the arcade with the puppet, this random room full of pizzas with Springtrap, this ball pit with Withered Bonnie, and the show stage with Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. It sounds like a great concept, similar to the Fright Dome, but a thousand times better, and I'm pretty sad it's supposedly been cancelled. Springtrap Posters this refers to how some posters in Fazbear's Fright from FNAF 3 will change to feature Springtrap. Spring Bonnie! Plushies Take Manhattan. This refers to a planned script for the FNAF movie. It supposedly would have been similar to the Muppets Take Manhattan. Scott had revealed this along with the other planned screenplays in his Reddit posts. Scott said he wanted to burn this script with fire. A little harsh. However, I'm not sure if this is a joke or not due to its obscurity and just Total randomness. Twisted Tales. This refers to how the Fazbear's Fright book series was supposed to be called Twisted Tales. It's unknown why it was changed, however it might have been because it was too similar to the title of the Twisted Ones novel. Reversed Bibs. This refers to how in UCN, Toy Chica and Rockstar Chica sometimes would have their bibs flipped due to their sprites being flipped. When Toy Chica would jitter in the office, her bib would be flipped, same with Rockstar Chica in the hallway. However, they were fixed in an update. It's also worth mentioning that in the FNAF World trailer when Adventure Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica pop up, Adventure Chica's bib is flipped. This one feels kinda lazy as he could've just like flipped the video, but I don't know. I'm not an animator. BB's mouth. This is first how in FNAF 2 it looks like there is something in Balloon Boy's mouth. Some people thought it was an endoskeleton and some people thought it was his eyes. I personally think it's light seeping in through his eye holes, but that's just my theory. Another weird thing about Balloon Boy's mouth is that you can see his mouth is empty when he's in the left vent, which makes the object in his mouth even more strange. It doesn't seem to still be there, but who knows. Unused Cupcake Animation This refers to an unused animation for the cupcake in FNAF World. Instead of bobbing side to side, this one squishes up and down with the top layer covering the bottom. It's worth knowing that there is different lighting, so this might have been a cut early animation or an entirely different cupcake. Foxy was considered to be a wolf or beaver. In Docko's interview with Scott, he revealed he had a hard time deciding on the fourth and final animatronic in the first game. He contemplated between a wolf, a beaver, and a fox. He scrapped the beaver early on due to its resemblance to Chipper, and ultimately, he chose the fox. The funny thing is that the series would eventually get a wolf and beaver animatronic in the form of Twisted Wolf and L-Chip. Black Ice Frost Bear's Incorrect Lures This refers to an error in FNAF AR on Black Ice Frost Bear's skin pack advertisement. The lures shown around the box are actually the lures for Boulder Toy Bonnie. The reason for this error is unknown, and I'm unaware if this error is still present as I don't play FNAF AR. Mando Pony Oh jeez. Andrew Stein, otherwise known online as Mando Pony, was a singer and songwriter. He started off by making songs based on the children's TV show My Little Pony. When that show went on a hiatus, Mando Pony didn't have any songs to make. That is until November 2014 where he released a FNAF 2 song called Survive the Night. He went on to make a number of popular FNAF songs such as Just Gold, The Show Must Go On, Balloons, and Noticed. Mando Pony was a frequent collaborator with artists like Nate Wants to Battle and Anne Lee, joining them on the Cool and Good Tour across America. Stein would later go on to join up with Nate Wants to Battle's music distribution company, Give Heart Records, where he released his 2017 album, Smoke and Mirrors. In 2020, Stein was accused of inappropriate relations and actions towards minors, as well as cheating on his wife. The investigation is ongoing, but there has been numerous amounts of screenshots provided, while Stein himself has yet to prove his innocence.
Nate wants to battle and give Heart Records have disassociated themselves with Stein by removing all of his music videos from their YouTube channel and removing his content from their website. Even though I did like some of his FNAF songs, what this man has done is disgusting and he should be punished as such. Unused Sister Location Game Over Screen This refers to this image found in the files of Sister Location. It shows Baby in a dark red tinted room and would have been used for the Game Over screen. It's a bit strange considering Sister Location has a very distinct blue tone. Phantom Shadow Freddy This is a name given to a pretty mysterious character from FNAF 3. He can appear in the far left office and has the same model as Withered Golden Freddy and Shadow Freddy. However, he appears to be Shadow Freddy due to some subtle purple coloring, even though it is hard to tell due to the green lighting. He's most likely just an easter egg, and nothing more. Swearing in FNAF World Uh, yeah. <laughs> this refers to two instances where swearing was in FNAF World. Kind of. The first instance was after Chica's Magic Rainbow was defeated, and is giving her final speech, she calls the player a dumbass. The second instance didn't actually make it into the final game, only being in the files. It's a line spoken by JJ and was supposed to be used in the Foxy Fighters minigame. Now I'm going to kick your ass! Wait, what? I, I can't see that in the game. Still not sure why this one was cut, as they both used the same swear word, which I'm not going to say again because I don't want to get demonetized. But this might be a joke, as she says, I can't say that in the game, afterward, meaning Scott most likely put this in the files for us to find. Molten Freddy's Eye Color this refers to Molten Freddy's inconsistent eye color. It differs between red, orange, and yellow. Seal Vent This refers to an unused button in the files of FNAF 3. In the final game, you seal a vent by double clicking it, but this graphic shows it was originally going to have its own dedicated button. Nightmare Foxy Tongue This refers to how Nightmare Foxy was originally supposed to have a snake-like tongue. This tongue was shown in Nightmare Foxy's teaser and even the title screen, however it doesn't appear in game. Scott most likely scrapped it due to difficulties animating it, or it being unnecessary. The Fourth Closet Leak This refers to how the third novel, The Fourth Closet, was partially leaked on Amazon before its official release. The leak apparently spoiled the ending of the novel. Scott again, being the madman he is, responded by releasing the full book early. Fungi in FNAF 4 This refers to how in FNAF 4, a garbled sound can be heard. If you take this audio file, reverse it, and change the pitch, it's actually the Night 1 phone call from FNAF 1. This is simply another easter egg. Nothing more, nothing less. Springtrap shares lines with Nightmare. This refers to how Springtrap in Special Delivery shares some lines with Nightmare in UCN. These lines are, you will not be spared, you will not be saved, and I am here to claim what is left of you. Some of his other lines are paraphrased versions of Nightmare and Nightmare Fredbear's lines. I've actually seen a theory that Afton, who is Springtrap, said these lines to his victims and the characters in UCN quote his lines to mock him, but this is just speculation. Freddy in Space 3 In a post Scott made on Steam a while back regarding the state of the upcoming projects in the franchise, Scott referenced the possibility of a Freddy in Space 3. Whether he was serious or joking is unknown. I'm quite a big fan of the first two Freddy in Space games and it would be cool to see a third one. Three Clowns This refers to an easter egg in the Curse of Dreadbear. In the barn, there are three posters that will randomly change. If three clown posters appear in your barn, you must hit them all with darts and then the easter egg will trigger. The room's lighting will go blue and the banner will turn black, displaying the words, It's me. Funny thing is that early on, people thought this was a hoax, as there was only one or two videos showcasing it. Faz Facts This refers to several texts in the files of FNAF AR, all starting with the word Faz Facts. These facts are about the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza franchise in-universe, and it's actually pretty helpful to explain the timeline in the FNAF series. Some of them are just facts, such as the first Freddy's location was Fredbear's, but some of them are jokes, like... <clears throat> Despite the name, hurricanes are actually not the leading cause of death of children in Hurricane Utah. <laughs> so, some of these are pretty funny. I'm not going to read all of them to you, but read them for yourself if you'd like. Uh, uh, however, these were scrapped for unknown reasons and can't be found in the actual game. I still can't get over how funny that was. 
Gravity Falls Coincidence. This refers to an episode of the mystery-filled Disney television show Gravity Falls. The episode, Seuss and the Real Girl, was first aired on September 22nd of 2014, which was not long after FNAF 1's release on August 8th of the same year. In the climax of the episode, the protagonists Dipper, Mabel, Seuss, and Stan are attacked by animatronics controlled by the villain of the episode in an arcade-filled pizzeria. This is a very bizarre coincidence given that Gravity Falls episodes usually enter production a year before the air date, with FNAF 1 having even becoming a public idea. Glass Underscore Pressure Glass Underscore Pressure is the name of an unused voice line for the computer in Sister Location. Glass Pressure Trigger Please do not push against the glass. Where or when this would have been used is completely unknown, although it's possible that it may have been linked to the unused image of Ballora looking through the glass, which we've mentioned earlier on the iceberg. The creator of this iceberg, Natter John, thinks it would have been probably used in the circus gallery. The reason he believes this is because Baby never directly attacks you in the game. This voice line could have been used in a section where she was planned to attack, but it was scrapped because Scott wanted to make Baby less aggressive, making it seem even more like she wanted to help Michael. Objectively, me and Natter John do think it's linked to the unused image of Ballora. We'll probably never know the answer because the line gives no hint as to where it would have been used. The only one who truly knows is Scott. Brow Boy Enemy In the game files of FNAF World, there is what appears to be a ball boy with the colors and face of Brow Boy. This implies that Brow Boy may have just been a regular enemy. Interestingly, his FNAF World Halloween Edition counterpart is just a regular enemy. Adult Theory Oh jeez, again. I can't speak about this one too heavily because of... But I'll say what I can. This was a theory actually started by Kane Carter slash Pop Goes in the lead up to Sister Location. Basically he theorized that the animatronics in Sister Location are used for adult entertainment, with the animatronics being compared to, and I quote, robotic prostitutes. The main support he had was the schedule that was put together through the source code on scottgames.com. Some of the lines in the trailer could have also implied some things, and people thought Ballora's design was a bit… sultry, for lack of a better word. Of course, now we know that the schedule that was put together was referring to renting the animatronics for birthday parties, and that they are just simple animatronic entertainers for children. Jeez, I would have hated to see the fan art around this time. <sighs> Rise of Frank and Freddy this refers to the original name for the Curse of Dreadbear DLC for Help Wanted. Dreadbear, of course, is a Frankenstein parody, judging by the stitches, green color scheme, and neck bolts, so it makes sense for him to be called Frank and Freddy, and hence the DLC be named as such. I actually wish they kept this as Dreadbear isn't as cool in my opinion. I had to put that out there because I don't want to get some very aggressive comments. I'm only a human people, please stop. 6666. Six, six, six. This refers to a theory about FNAF 1's Custom Night. Apparently, if you set all the animatronics AI level to 6, you would unlock the kitchen. Yeah, this was obviously fake, similar to the 1987 hoax. However, I really never heard about this one until Go Motion's video about FNAF hoaxes. Mike Kill All This refers to a theory about the FNAF 2 trailer. Apparently, if you reverse the beginning with Withered Bonnie and the children singing, you can hear Mike Kill All in the reverse song. This would have implied Mike Schmidt, or Michael Afton as we find out later, killed the children. This however was just a coincidence, as the song is just London Bridge, so if it was indeed true, we'd have some serious questions for the writers of London Bridge, not Scott or FNAF. Beacon Bonnie Beacon Bonnie is an incredibly obscure secret animatronic that only appears in the hard mode of Funtime Foxy's level in Help Wanted. On rare occasions, Endo one will appear among the other animatronics. Walking into End while one will trigger a jump scare from Beacon Bonnie. He's just classic Bonnie with glitch textures and is referred to as Beacon Bonnie in the files. Freedom Similar to the Mike Kill All, in the FNAF 2 trailer, people thought that Withered Foxy was saying freedom at the end of it. As we all know, this is referring to the jump scare sound. And I mean, it's not a bad theory. I believed it back then. Clipping Errors there have been many clipping errors throughout the FNAF series, but I will only focus on a couple. In numerous instances, you can see Withered Bonnie's bow tie clipping through his lower jaw and teeth, such as in his custom night mugshot, in the hallway, in the hallway again, and many more. In the FNAF 1 trailer, Freddy's endo will sometimes clip into his hands, as well as his jaw clipping into his stomach. In the promo art for FNAF 1, Freddy's bow tie clips into his jaw. When he's in the office, Withered Freddy's shoulder clips into his arm. 
In a couple instances, Mangle's second head clips through her ear. In the office, Golden Freddy's legs clip through his stomach. Springtrap's arms clip through many of the vents in FNAF 3. Plushtrap's hand clipping through his foot. The Freddles clipping into the bed. Fredbear's body literally just clipping into the floor. Ennard's entire body is just a mess of clipping. Baby's torso clipping through her skirt. There's probably more, but these are just some of them. Breaking Wheel Cover Art For Fazbear's Fright number 7, the main story was supposed to be Breaking Wheel before it was changed to the cliffs. People thought it was because the story was too gruesome, but Scott revealed in a Reddit post it was changed because the cover art was too scary. Also, spoiler alert, if you want to skip this, just go to this time on the screen. You guys gone? Good. The cover art shows main character Reed cornered by the endoskeleton that has mutilated Julius' body in the climax of the book. Chris This refers to how people used to, and still do, call the bite victim from FNAF 4 Chris. I remember seeing a fanfiction and corresponding animation of the FNAF 4 bite where they called him Chris and not for sure that was his name, which it isn't. While we're addressing this, some commenters have been pretty annoyed that I've been calling this kid Evan. And while I know the theory hasn't been confirmed, it's just a lot easier and more convenient to call him Evan as opposed to Bite Victim or Crying Child. Chica's Party World This refers to a string of text hidden in the sparse code of one of the sister location teasers on scottgames.com. This might have meant that Funtime Chica, who would only appear in FNAF 6, was rented out during the events of Sister Location. Some people thought this meant that Chica had her own restaurant, however I don't feel that's the case. Old Designs for Bonnie and Foxy this refers to supposedly early designs for Bonnie and Foxy, seen in the anniversary images. In the images, Bonnie has a black bow tie and Foxy has two hands and no tearing in his stomach. The lack of stomach tearing could have been because it wasn't modeled yet, but there's no explanation for the other ones. ATMs This refers to some unused models of ATMs found in the files of Help Wanted. One of them looks pretty old, with the other one looking pretty modern. Their purpose is still unknown to this day. Burnt Frettles in the files of Help Wanted, there is an unused texture for the Freddles. It was apparently supposed to be for the hard mode of Build a Mangle in Curse of Dreadbear. However, there is no hard mode in Curse of Dreadbear, so the texture goes unused. Fans have given these Freddles the nickname Burnt Freddles due to their burnt texture. Obviously. Teases and Anniversary Images This refers to how in the third series of images that Scott would release on FNAF's anniversary, he included some teases for FNAF 6. In the Springtrap teaser, you can see Scrap Chap's hand. In the Baby Teaser, you can see Scrap Baby's hair, and in the Funtime Freddy Teaser, you can see Molten Freddy's neck. This is a pretty genius way for Scott to tease the game. However, in the Bonnie Teaser, people had no idea what that was on the shelf. It was actually revealed to be Scrap Baby's endoskeleton head, which I didn't know until researching this video. Early Glitch Trap Design In the files of Help Wanted, there is an unused early model for Glitch Trap, which is just a strangely textured model of String Trap. He's mostly gray and has, like, a stitch on him. This is most likely inspired by the electronic Spring Trap drawing at the end of the updated Freddy files. It was probably just a placeholder, but it's fully right for animations. Pizzeria when FNAF 1 was first released, the Help Wanted ad when you start a new game misspelled the word Pizzeria as Pizzeria with an A. This has since been patched. Summoning Nightmare Foxy In FNAF 4, if you shine your flashlight at the bed for 30 seconds, you'll be jump scared by Nightmare Foxy regardless of his previous state. Toy Freddy's Foot In UCN, Toy Freddy's right foot will always appear in front of his stool, even when he isn't active. The only circumstance in which his foot will be there is if he gets a game over, although that could be because the stool itself is gone. This is most likely an error and Scott just forgot to remove Toy Freddy's foot. Nightmare's Brain This refers to how Nightmare's suit is actually completely see-through. You most likely can't tell, but if I put a white background behind him, yeah, it's fairly obvious. Because of this, people have noticed that Nightmare has a brain. What this could represent is unknown. The creator of this iceberg, Nader John, believes that this means Nightmare is some sort of embodiment of the crying child's death. He believes this because the crying child's death is a result of his brain, specifically his frontal lobe, getting bitten by Fredbear. Nightmare, being a black version of Nightmare Fredbear, who's a Nightmare version of Fredbear, could be a way of representing how Nightmare himself is a dark reflection of the thing that killed the crying child, and the brain is a reminder of how he died. His theory makes a lot of sense, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's the reason. Help Wanted Box Art Used Fan Art 
This refers to a teaser on ScottGames.com. The teaser, which was a version of the box art of Help Wanted, showed Spring Bonnie and Funtime Foxy, among other characters. However, these two used fan models. Funtime Foxy's model was made by Gable Court, and Spring Bonnie's model was made by PopGoes slash Kane Carter. This teaser was pulled from the website, and when it was re-uploaded, Funtime Foxy was using her official model, and Spring Bonnie was replaced by Nightmare Own. Scott took to Reddit to apologize for what had happened, while revealing that Steel Wool thought the fan designs were his. Slumberfish Turtle this refers to a cut asset in FNAF World. Files for a swimming turtle that were originally used in one of Scott's previous games, that being Slumberfish, exist in the game. Given that the files are grouped among the fish from Dee Dee's fishing hole, it's likely that the turtle was intended to be another catchable creature in the minigame with its own payout tier, or probably functional as an obstacle to prevent the player from catching a fish. Strangely, it isn't robotic like all the other fish. This might be the reason why it was dropped from the game. Five Nights at Freddy's The Untold Story this refers to the early name of the first FNAF novel, The Silver Eyes. Scott posted an early novel cover on his website with the title The Untold Story. This is most likely a placeholder with the real name, The Silver Eyes, being uploaded as a teaser a few days later. Insanity Ending on Day 1 This refers to how to get the insanity ending in FNAF 6 on the first day. Instead of getting the egg baby and you know all that stuff, if you play the fruit punch while getting many jackpots, you can unlock it that way without even getting to the night section. Phantom Foxy Glitch This is a glitch that occurs if the player is jump scared by Phantom BB while Phantom Foxy is waiting in the office in FNAF 3. This will lead to Phantom Foxy standing in the office without jump scaring the player. Eventually, the game will correct itself and the jump scare will trigger. This glitch occurs because the game gets confused trying to figure out what to do with Phantom Foxy when Phantom BB jump scares the player, leading to the sprite of Phantom Foxy standing motionless until the game remembers what to do with him. It's likely Scott never expected a rare event like this to occur, so he never assigned a function to Phantom Foxy in this event, which is evident given that this is one of the few glitches in the series that never got patched. It's also possible for you to complete the night while he's frozen like this, but that's very unlikely and I can only find one video of it. Special Delivery VIP This refers to some unused graphics and special delivery, showing that a VIP service was planned for the game. What this service would have provided is a mystery, but in my opinion, it probably would have been similar to the Gold Pass in Mario Kart Tour. And if you play Mario Kart Tour or know about the Gold Pass, be happy it's not in this game because it's extremely aggressive with the microtransactions. Exotic Margarine This refers to an anniversary image of Exotic Butters, where the project file name is called Exotic Margarine. This might have meant that Exotic Butters original name was Exotic Margarine, which is not as memorable, but... Phone Guy in Delta Rune. In the Undertale sequel Delta Rune, there is a reference to Purple Guy. When you return home after your adventure with Rousey and Susie, you get a chance to walk around the town and talk to the monsters inhabiting it. On the west side of town, you stumble upon a very humble looking pizzeria that has various mascots doing a promotion outside of it. One such mascot is a purple dinosaur wearing the head of Icy, a mascot character whose name is on the pizzeria. If you talk to another NPC, Burger Pants, he'll tell you about the co-workers wearing the mascot outfits. When he tries to describe the purple dinosaur, he says, Purple guy? Man, that guy, you gotta... A actually, does that guy even work here? This is 100% a reference to FNAF, with the mascots and the pizzeria and all that. It's actually kind of sweet to see another classic indie developer pointing out FNAF. Crying Cupcake In the Chica's Party minigame in FNAF 3, you can access an area of black crying cupcakes with one of them chasing you. They can't kill you and the significance of them are unknown. Dreadbear in Hallway In an early screenshot of Curse of Dreadbear, Dreadbear was seen in the hallway level. He never appears in this level in the final game. Like the Burnt Frettles, people believe this was planned to be used in the hard mode but went unused because Curse of Dreadbear doesn't have a hard mode. FNAF 1 Scream Origin this refers to the FNAF 1 jump scare sound. The sound effect is known as X Scream in the files. The origin for the sound is from a scene from a British movie, Insomnioid, where a woman gives birth to aliens. He yeah, yeah. Here's the original clip. And here's the FNAF sound effect. I don't know if this is at all related, but I'm pretty sure there's a Fazbear Fright story where someone gives birth to an alien. So, 
I don't I don't know if that's related or just like a coincidence. Distorted plushies. In the files of Help Wanted, there are several unused models of the plushies which are heavily twisted and disordered. What these would have been used for is unknown. It's unlikely they were placeholders because they used the in-game models. It wouldn't make sense to use distorted models as placeholders and the final models were finished. Hanging Mangle This refers to the teaser on FNAFworld.com, Scott's website that was made for FNAF World. The teaser, when brightened up, showed that what we thought was Adventure Mangle hanging with the phrase, see what you've done, written at the bottom. Some people thought that this meant that Scott was in a depressed state, and while that wasn't true, it's still sad considering how Scott was having suicidal thoughts in the backlash to FNAF World. I'm happy he's doing better now, but back to the teaser. Mangle wasn't hanging, thankfully. She had the paddle ball I seen in the trailer in her mouth while the paddle part was being above screen. Plushy Prototypes Several prototypes exist of the official FNAF plushies, most notably from the sister location wave by Funko. The outer plush had a different body, the baby plush had more detail on its hands, there was a Funtime Foxy plush with teeth, which was sewn alongside the final design for some reason, and the Bolora plush actually looked good! Funko isn't the only company that had prototypes for plushies. The company Good Stuff had prototypes for a plush of L Chip and Egg Baby. Unlike the other prototypes I mentioned, these two haven't yet to be released in their official form. The Egg Baby prototype plush is the only Egg Baby plush in existence, which makes it quite unique. Scanning for glitches. Scanning for glitches refers to a rare, unexplained Easter egg incursion of Dreadbear that occurs in the Danger Keep Out levels. I'm not gonna try and explain this one, so. Look for yourself. Many believe that this could be the developers of the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience trying to locate and or eliminate Glitch Trap, but that's just speculation. Number in Withered Chica's Mouth This refers to a rumor about Withered Chica in FNAF 2. People thought when she was in Party Room 2, she had a number in her mouth. I think it's an 8, but it could be a 6. This is most likely just a lighting coincidence, similar to when people thought they saw a cat animatronic in the prize corner or the thing in BB's mouth, which was mentioned earlier on the iceberg, so once again, go check him out. Scott listens to Markiplier. This is a theory that Scott listens to the YouTuber Markiplier. Markiplier has said things in his videos that would seemingly go on to become official things in the next games. He called Bonnie Bonbon, bon, who would later become a character. Oh, is that Mr. Bonbon bon coming out of his hidey hole? Mr. Bonbon bon came out of his hidey hole. He coined the names Golden Freddy and Purple Guy before they had become official. Purple Guy! He said that it would be neat to play FNAF 1 in VR, and later on, FNAF VR would become a thing in the form of Help Wanted. This would be like terrifying if you controlled the cameras with like an Oculus Rift or something. Oh my god. Because you just move your head back and forth. However, the most obvious example is when Markiplier was playing FNAF 2 and he said he didn't want to wake the baby, referring to the puppet. I'm gonna call it the baby because that's what that thing is. You don't want to wake the baby, don't let the music box run out and wake the baby. In the lead up to FNAF 4's Halloween DLC, the Nightmare Reon's teaser code name was Don't Wake the Baby.jpg. And if you recall, Nightmare Reon is the night version of the puppet. Hmm? If you want to learn more about this, check out FNAF's video on this. Trick or Treat BB Jump Scare. In the Trick or Treat minigame, Nightmare Balloon Boy was used as the jump scare for Balloon Boy Strangely. This is likely because BB did not already have a jump scare, however there's an unused animation of BB jump scare in the player. The reason why it was unused is unknown, but it's probably due to the fact that Steel Wool didn't find it scary. Using the mask and the flashlight at the same time In an early teaser for FNAF 2, the flashlight was shown to be used while the mask was on. I assume this was changed so Withered Fox it would be harder to repel. It's possible Scott felt the game would have been too easy if the Foxy could be repelled while the mask was on, and this would just allow people to leave the mask on all the time, aside from needing to wind up the music box. Numbers Easter Egg This refers to an Easter egg in Sister Location. It occurs when you hold the 0-1 keys in the Ballora Gallery. The purpose of this easter egg is unknown. The easter egg was actually discovered in 2021, a whole 5 years after Sister Location's release. Some people think it's a debug menu, some people think it was put in there intentionally, and we're overall just not sure what it's about. Golden Freddy on Night 2 
on extremely rare occasions, and I mean extremely rare occasions. It's possible for Wither Golden Freddy to appear on night two of FNAF 2. It's so rare they even put a video online, it's scarce. Whether this is intentional or a glitch is unknown. Impossible good ending in FNAF 3 on Nintendo Switch. When FNAF 3 was initially released on the Nintendo Switch, it was impossible to teleport in the Shadow Bonnie minigame, making it impossible to get the true good ending. This was eventually patched, but it's still unknown what caused the glitch. 1993 Aurora Shooting This is a dark topic, and if something like this might bother you, then you should skip ahead to the time on screen. I'll give you a few seconds. Alright. In 1993, at a Chuck E. Cheese in Aurora, Colorado, after hours, a man started shooting. The perpetrator, 19-year-old Nathan Dunlap, a further employee of the restaurant, was frustrated about being fired five months prior to the shooting and sought revenge by committing the attack. Dunlap entered the restaurant at 9 o'clock p.m. where he ordered a sandwich and played an arcade game. He then hid in a restroom at about 9.50 p.m. He exited the restaurant after closing with a 25 caliber semiotic pistol. Dunlap first shot Sylvia Crowell, who was cleaning the salad bar. She was hit in the right ear and was severely wounded, dying the next day in the hospital. Ben Grant was fatally shot near his left eye as he was vacuuming. Colleen O'Connor was fatally shot through the top of her head. Bobby Stevens, the lone survivor of the shooting, was shot in the jaw. However, Stevens fell to the floor and played den, hoping he wouldn't finish the job. Dunlap then forced Marge Kohlberg, the store manager, to unlock the safe. After she opened it, Dunlap shot her twice through the ears. Dunlap fled the scene with $1,500 worth of cash and game tokens he stole from inside the restaurant. He was arrested at his mother's apartment 12 hours later. Bobby Stevens, who had escaped through a back door, was a big contributor to Dunlap being arrested. This was a horrific tragedy and I hate having to bring it up. However, some people think that these events are eerily similar to FNAF 1. The connection was first brought up by MatPat and several people believed it. He theorized that the animatronics and their behaviors lined up with the victims of the shootings. He also theorized that we play as the killer and that the game's events were our nightmare as we were on death row, much like the real life perpetrator. Now, this in my opinion is an extreme coincidence and is quite disrespectful, comparing a fictional game about haunted bunny rabbits to a real life tragedy. 1, 5, 7, 8 In the background of Sister Location, you can sometimes hear a slowed down version of Baby saying the numbers 1, 5, 7, and 8 in a random order. It is unknown what this means in the lore currently. This most notably plays in Circus Control, when offline, and under the desk. In FNAF AR, these numbers actually limit out around 8-bit baby when she haywires. Orange Springtrap Mystery Mini This refers to how at Toy Fair 2016, when the FNAF Mystery Mini prototypes were being displayed, Springtrap was... orange. How this could have happened is beyond me. What, did they see Golden Freddy's color and gave it to him? Assumed he wasn't green because of the green lighting in FNAF 3 and thought he was orange? There is no real explanation. However, I think the design of him is pretty interesting. Jason. This refers to how the picture of the creepy child face in UCN that's meant to represent Cassidy slash the vengeful spirit is actually a picture of Scott Cawthon's son, Jason. Scott has indeed confirmed this. I just can't find it anymore, but I, I swear it's true. Sister Location Trailer 2 When Sister Location's trailer came out, it was called Trailer 1, somewhat implying there would be a second one. However, Scott took to seem to say a second trailer would spoil too much of the game and that there wouldn't be one. In his interview with Docco, PJ Haywood, the voice actor for William Afton, confirmed that the intro to Sister Location was originally meant to be Trailer 2. German Funtime Freddy this refers to how Funtime Freddy's voice was going to be German. His voice actor, Kellen Goff, shared some of these voice lines during an interview with GT Live. <laughs> Hello, little children. Glad to see you back again. The voice is pretty amazing, however, I wouldn't say it's particularly scary. Lost FNAF 1 trailer. This refers to a uh, Lost trailer for FNAF 1. The whole situation has been kind of a mess, so let me explain. It all starts with the first comment on the trailer of FNAF 1 on Scott's YouTube channel. This user, Walt Meets, says, I can sort of see why you changed the eyes from the last video. This meant there was a previous trailer. Someone on Twitter asked about it, to which he responded there was an original trailer which had a strong resemblance to the official one with a scarier endo and red eyes, which is most likely this endoskeleton. 
He also remembers a few gaming YouTubers making mention of it when it was still on Kickstarter. However, a Reddit user had used the Wayback Machine on Scott's Google Plus page and found three unwatchable videos. One of them was called Five Nights at Freddy's Gameplay, which is most likely the video on Scott's YouTube channel that might have had an upload error or something, similar to the Five Nights at Freddy's video which was most likely just the real trailer. However, there's one more called Five Nights. People assume that this Five Nights video was the lost trailer. However, Walmeet had posted another tweet where he said he was mistaken and that he was recalling the existing trailer. So then that wasn't the lost trailer, but then what is this first Five Nights video? It had to have been something. And that is unfortunately still lost. Unused section of Happiest Day. I'll be honest, myself and the creator of this iceberg now to John are not too familiar with the unused section of Happiest Day. So we're just going to go off what we've been told. Apparently, underneath the map of the Happiest Day minigame, there's a section taken straight from BB's Air Adventure. It's unknown why it was there. It may have been used similar to the balloon section in the other minigames, but that's just speculation. Ice Cave This first to an unused music track for FNAF World that based on the name was probably going to be used in an ice theme area that got scrapped. Some believe it could have been used for an early version of Dusting Fields, which is very much possible, but considering that area is outdoors, the name Ice Cave wouldn't be very fitting. I honestly wish this track made it to the final games, it's honestly a really good track. I can't play it for obvious reasons, but I'll leave a link to the song in the description. Chica's Missing Eyes This is first to how when Bonnie leaves the show stage in FNAF 1, Chica's right eye disappears and doesn't reappear until she leaves the show stage. Why this happens is unknown, but it is most likely an error. Interestingly, in the video stage performance that Fiznum posted to promote FNAF Plus, Chica's right eye was actually broken and didn't move. This could be Fiznum referencing the event in the first game, but it could also just be a coincidence. And that is the end of the iceberg. But that's not it, of course. Now, we will interview the creator of this iceberg, Natter John, and go over new entries and the future for these icebergs. Also, if you're enjoying the video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more icebergs or videos. And here we are with the creator of this iceberg and my good friend, Natter John. Hi. I was <laughs> going to introduce myself, but then I realized you just did that. Oh, okay, wait, wait, hold on, let me, let me restart, hold on, we, we, we can do it differently. And here we are with the creator of this iceberg and my good friend, Natter John. How you feeling today, John? Hey, good, good to be back on here again after, uh, it's been a, like, it's been like a month since we recorded, uh, the Mario, uh, the Mario Director's Cut interview, which wow. isn't even out yet at the time of this recording. We're recording this on August 3rd, which, by the way, is the birthday of Masahiro Sakurai, creator of Kirby and Super Smash Bros. Go wish, go wish him happy birthday, everybody. Sakurai! Um, <laughs> Even though it's not his birthday by the time this will be out, go wish him happy birthday anyway. He deserves it. Yeah, just like just wish him happy birthday all year round, guys. The man puts himself through so much for the Smash games, so just please show him some respect, please. Like, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it's I know it's it might it might it's only a week for you guys, but literally this is a month between recordings. <laughs> yeah. It's also been exhausting editing these FNAF icebergs, so I'm glad yeah, and, they've been And making doing so them well. as well, we, we can assure you. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm just gonna get right into some questions for you. So uh starting off simple, who is your favorite FNAF character? My favorite character my favorite FNAF character is Bonnie. Just classic Bonnie? Yeah, just classic Bonnie. Um, Either Bonnie or Lalvit would be my favorite character. Like originally, like before I before I had a zombie as my profile pick, I originally used um I originally used an edited version of the Lalbit, but with the but with the colors replaced uh, with green instead of orange. Ah, clever, clever. Okay, and uh, yeah. who's uh, your? Uh, although, oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, although for a, for a while, I actually used an OC. I know, I know this is I know this isn't really relevant to the question, but for a while, before I even settled on using Lalbit. As my profile pick because he's my favorite character other than Bonnie. I would have used Bonnie as my profile pick before the zombie, but I feel Bonnie has just been done to death. Especially when you have like uh uh Desage Q thirty seven, like one of the biggest FNAF focused YouTubers using Bonnie as his profile pick, you know? Yeah. I just feel way too many people have done that. So I thought of doing Lolbit, but I went with a zombie in the end. 
Well, that's good. That 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 that, that makes sense. Um, yeah. do you have a least favorite FNAF character? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get roasted in the comments for this. It my least favorite might be Glitch Trap. You know what? I honestly, I'm not gonna say I agree, but I'm gonna say I can see where you're coming from, and I, he's, he's certainly not my favorite. He, he's on the bottom for me too, so I get where you're coming yeah, yeah, from. Like, like the big problem I have with Glitch Trap is just, just how, how just he completely like destroys the lore when it was already a mess. That and it, this is kind of my thing. Like I liked Spring Bonnie's design. I don't like Glitch Traps. Yeah, uh, I just feel, I just feel Glitch Trap's design, e even, even regarding, even disregarding the lower point, I just think Glitch Trap's design is just really out there. It doesn't I just think fit it's, with the other, like, suits we've known. Yeah, it, it just seems, and honestly, I think it's, a lot of people say, uh, uh, Scrap Trap looks looks a bit off but honestly i'd say he's nowhere he, he's 10 times better than glitch trap glitch trap to me is way more out there than scrap trap is because at least while scrap trap do, is kind of a plot hole with like, i do think it's kind of a plot hole how scrap trap looks completely different to spring trap oh yeah I, i'm i'm a, i'm a big scrap trap um not hater, but I think his design doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I just no, think I... it kind of conflicts with the lore. And I know you might say, oh, but Scott didn't want to be lazy. But I, I, I feel in that case, laziness is better than trying to do something new if it just creates an entirely new plot hole among the numerous others. He should have just made like, uh, not like just, not just copied Springtrap. Oh, like what about like a burnt and like maybe like some of like the, the, uh, the cost, what, the, the suit come off? Like, I, I feel, I feel Scott could have given, like, Scrap Trap every feature, like, you know, the missing arm and all that. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, that's, I guess we know your stance on Glitch Trap. I don't know how many people are gonna be a little upset in the comments, but we'll see when the video Ah, comes there's out. always somebody. Let them be. Um, so, do you have a favorite FNAF game? Yes. I'm gonna get roasted for this one, too. Uh... My favorite is Pizzeria Simulator. Oh, well, that, that's not. How, how would you get? That's not a. That's a pretty not unpopular opinion. Like it's a good game. It's not a bad game by any means. I don't know why you get roasted for that. Oh no! A lot of people say Pizzeria Simulator is one of the worst games. Like, really? Cause like you'd it, you'd think it'd be like it's an important game for the lore. Well, yes. Well, I I don't think people necessarily think the game is bad. It's just kind of. It just kind of got the same problem FNAF 4 has. Just people like it, but they just don't really care as much for it, you know? Well, I think that FNAF 4 also suffers from the fact that the game is hard. Like, a lot harder than, like, FNAF 1, 2, and 3, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I, I, I still have yet to beat Night 7 of FNAF 4. I've yet and to my beat friend, Night 1. One of, my, <laughs> one of my friends... One of my friends said he beat Night 8, and it took him God knows how long, and he was freaking screaming when he did. He know- uh, Friend, you know who you are, and you're a freaking legend for being able to beat that. <laughs> yeah, do you have a, a least favorite FNAF game? Oh, that's- that's the hard question. I'm genuinely interested to hear your answer. If I had to give- Oh, actually, you know what? Why am I overcomplicating it? It's an easy answer. Uh, FNAF AR is my least favorite. Oh, okay. I mean, I, that's fair. Do you have, like, but of, like, the main series? Like, because AR is kind of like a spin-off. Oh, off. you're making this difficult. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh. but, like, AR is kind of a spin-off. Like, it's not really a main game. Oh, of the main series. Of the main series. So, what do you classify as main series? FNAF? Does FNAF World count as main series? No. So you're living this to the 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 seven One, two, made by three, Scott. Four, exactly. Sister Location, Pizzeria Sim, UCN, and Help Wanted. And Help Wanted. So, oh, if I had to pick one, if I had <laughs> to pick one of those seven, it might 
creepy sister location? Yes, that was what I was thinking. I hoped it was sister location. Oh, no. It's not... I love... I really, really, really do love sister location. Like, but it's more so about... The, I love it, but I wished it was better. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, I just wanted more of the same quality, which we didn't get. Yeah. Yeah, of course, and, it's different. And... Honestly, I, possibly the number one thing I don't like in Sister Location is I, I I know I know if I got roasted before I'm gonna get praised after <laughs> saying this. Sister Lo I Night Four alone is a reason I think Sister Location deserves a lower review score. Oh yeah, Night Four is terrible. I don't know why. Like I'm I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say Scott was lazy with the game because he really wasn't. That was arguably his most ambitious game, but push the I, limits of click team, definitely. Yeah, but I'm just like he had he was doing so well on the other nights. The other nights were just like all about kind of going somewhere, but just Nice just order kind of, no point. Like what happened afterward? Did like Circus Baby just not move and let Michael escape? Like what happened? Yeah, and and I know Scott I know Scott wants to leave this up for debate, but like, there's no kind of context to line. Like in the Docker interview, he literally refused to t tell us whose suit that was. I think it's Funtime Chica, honestly. Well, you know what? It might not be, cause she might have been rented out during that time. Uh, maybe, maybe it could be Funtime Chica, although, although the only the only flaw in that theory, in my opinion, is. What well, like then? Because th baby says when they when she morphs into Enter with the other Enertron, she says, "I've been out before." But like Enter wouldn't be complete if Funtime Chica wasn't in there. Is yeah, I kind of thought about that. But like, was where did F maybe Funtime Chica though was already rented out, or maybe she wasn't possessed? Wait, right? Yeah, but like still, that wouldn't really like e Enter is just like a massive parts even like in in an inanimate ones like like the mask the mask is completely inanimate yeah like, yeah of course just because something like isn't possessed doesn't mean it can be part of enter that's the way i see it wait so hold on i just, I just want to get this straight so i know that i know okay wait i know that molten freddy had wait wait hold on here wait baby is possessed by elizabeth um but like who's Ballora? Funtime Freddy and Funtime Foxy. I, I think I, it's confirmed. I can't the remember five where. Spirits, I think it's confirmed like the five the missing books. children. Is that it? I, I yeah yeah. Uh, apparently, like uh, the Funtime animatronics use the remnant from the classic animatronics from FNAF One. So does that mean Sister Location comes after FNAF One in the timeline? Probably. I know there's a huge debate about that whether it comes after FNAF Four We're or. We're not talking FNAF about the 1. timeline. This would be too long. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. The timeline. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely just feel, I definitely feel that enough is confirmation that Sister Location is after FNAF 1. I mean, that, and it makes sense considering Michael Afton probably worked in 2 and 1, and... Although the only flaw in that theory, again, is that you know, many people said odor was because of Michael Afton's rotting corpse. Yeah. Well, if it's if Sister Location is after FNAF one and two, then he wouldn't have gotten scooped by then. Oh, that's a good point. That's a so big it just plot kind hole of, in a theory. A lot of theories. Oh my god! Wow. I just feel like. Like, if that's the- it's either- it's gonna ruin a theory either way. It's either gonna ruin the theory that this location takes place before FNAF 2, or it's gonna ruin the theory that Michael is Jeremy, or Fritz, and Ma Mike Schmidt. Wow. Okay, so... Hmm. Do we know that the fun times... Do we know that the fun time animatronics beside Baby... Do we know that they're possessed by the children, or are they, like, remnant? Like, just fueled by remnant, like Mangle? I- I believe it is confirmed to be remnant. So then where did, How does that even make sense in the t It's kind of been confirmed that Michael Afton is the person we play as in FNAF 2, 1, and 3. 
It's like the only thing I can think of is if maybe he was. Oh no, that wouldn't make sense either. I was gonna say maybe he was scooped twice, but then if he was scooped before, he wouldn't have needed to be scooped again. I don't mean to cut this conversation off, but this relates to one of the suggested entries, so I'm just gonna stop before you reveal all my all my answers. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't want this to end up like um the 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 wriggler thing in the last interview. Oh no. Okay, let's just let's just move on. <laughs> so yeah, what is your favorite FNAF? Fan made song. I, 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 it would either be the FNAF one sung by the Living Tombstone or the FNAF one sung by DA Games. We Want Out? Is that it? Yes. Oh, see, I, I haven't listened to that one yet. I'm surprised. Oh, you haven't? Calm. Oh, you're missing out. Wow. I'm surprised it didn't say Stay Calm. Stay calm. That is another good one. I just don't think it's as iconic as the other ones. Well, it doesn't have. It's it's just whatever your favorite. Is. It doesn't have to be the most. I, I I I know that, but my I, sometimes sometimes something I rank songs on is how much they kind of how much nostalgia they give me. You know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um. So, next question is: uh, Do you own any FNAF merchandise? Uh, <laughs> I I it, it will it will be a better question to. <laughs> Oh, let's let's just say I own a lot. I was about to say it would be a better question to ask what I don't have, but then I realized I don't, I don't have as much stuff as I probably should. <laughs> so, like, do you have any of? But like, the I do. Figures? I do. Sorry. Well, like, like, t like tell us. Well, what, what kind of like what parts of the merch do you have? I have, I have the original series of action figures plus Funtime Freddy. I've and I've just several plushies and mystery minis. Do you have any pops? I have a pop of Springtrap and a pop of Rockstar Freddy. Ooh, the Rockstar Freddy pop is nice. I want to get him. He looks nice. Oh, yeah. Now, now we're going to get into more, like, iceberg-related questions. Do you have a favorite layer on the FNAF iceberg? A favorite layer? <laughs> Harder to choose this time because there's so, there's so many. There's um, so many. If I had to pick one I'd call my favorite, I'd say either either the first layer or the last layer. Just because those are the ones... I, just because the first layer was the one that was kind of where everything kind of fell into place, you know? Just kind of, I knew instantly everything that will be on there. Yeah. Uh, and the final one, because just kind of everything kind of with that one jumped around a lot. And I got to experiment a lot with that one. Now, this might be... An even harder question for you, you might want to have to pull up the iceberg yourself, but do you have a favorite entry on the iceberg? A favorite entry? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a tough one, honestly. That is a tough one. Um, If I had to pick one entry, it would be... Oh man, that, that that is a really tough question. <laughs> Holy cow! Uh if I had to pick one, I'd say it might be the Lost FNAF one. I trailer. knew you were gonna say that. I was thinking he's gonna pick the Lost FNAF one trailer. <laughs> Just because that to me is such an interesting topic, and I don't think it's ever gonna be solved. Yeah. All right. This is the most important question that I've ever asked you. Okay. Okay. okay, go on. Do you like FNAF World? Yes, I do like Thank FNAF God! World. Thank God! Despite Woo! all despite all the issues it has, and despite the fact that Scott isn't proud of it, and despite the fact that its development was rushed, and despite the fact that there's numerous problems with it that I could go on for hours about, I still do like the game for what it is. I, I mean that 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 that's great, um, and I guess that concludes uh, our beginning questions. Now, um, even yeah. though we aren't covering corrections, I want to say a big thank you to Shy Guy Mike for correcting every entry as they came out. We oh, really yeah. appreciate like, the help. Literally, man, if you're if you're watching this, you helped me out so much on Reddit when you gave suggestions. Like honestly, you really did. Shout shout out to you, man. Honestly. Woo. Um. Now. 
you would be this is the only part where I ask where I, I say fan suggestions, but you'd be surprised. I went through every video's comment section and could not find a suggestion. I'm not kidding. <laughs> well, I, I suppose you covered I a lot suppose of bases. There were there were more questions I got than suggestions on when I originally posted the thing on Reddit. Yeah. Um this isn't a suggestion, but someone did ask about the puppet in the thumbnail of part six. Uh, he's not real. He's not a character. I made him up in, in, in Photoshop. He's just supposed to be scary. Although I did work on him for a while. He's, he's, he's not important. So don't, don't worry about him. <laughs> I, 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 I believe, I, I, I believe I saw somebody in the chat. I don't, I can't remember was it in the chat or if it was a comment. If it was a comment, it's probably been deleted. Um... But somebody said, is that, is that the thing from Those Nights at Rachel's? No. <laughs> a lot of people thought it was that weird thing from uh, Those Nights at Rachel's. I think it's just called The Thing. It's not from Those Nights at Rachel's. Tyson made it himself. No, yeah, yeah. I, I, did, I, I made it. I just kind of, actually, I took the body of the Help Wanted puppet, and I took a skull, like an actual picture of a skull, and edited it. So that, that's how it actually made to be. Uh, but but no one no one had any suggestions. However, I, Little T, Tyson, myself, I have some suggestions I'd like to tell you for the iceberg. And maybe you could like um, say maybe where, what layer they'd go on roughly because I know there's like 1,400 of them, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, this is the first one. And this one was really surprising. FNAF fan songs. I know you put the Living Tombstone, but, but like FNAF songs, there's a millions of them. I'm surprised there was no entry for them. Well, yeah, I, I was going to do songs in general, but the reason I didn't was mostly because, like, really, as far as I know, I, I, I just feel the Living Tombstone had the biggest kind of impact, you know? Yeah. Like, I was mostly basing these entries on impact more than anything. Like, I would have included way more YouTubers uh, if I if I could have. Like, uh, like there were two you there were two other you there were three other YouTubers technically. Well, DA Games. I was gonna put DA Games on there, but I feel he kind of counted it as a song. And and the the only two other YouTubers I thought of at the time uh, were were Pretty Grumpy Bear and uh, Go Motion. Wow, I had Pretty Gumpy Bear and Go Motion written on this list along with Game Theory. Yeah, Matt Pat was on there. Matt? Oh, he was. Oh shoot. No. Oh, I forgot about that. There were so many. There were so many entries, dude. I can't remember all of them. I just. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I don't blame you, honestly. But yeah, the reason I didn't include Pretty Gumpy Bear and Go Motion was that I feel. The stuff they were famous for was kind of on the iceberg already. You know how Go Motion is famous for Nightmare JJ, and uh, Pretty Grumpy Bear is famous for finding the number in Withered Chica's mouth. Well, yeah, but I feel like Go Motion was more famous for her speed edits, right? What? I I don't really know. I, I actually I actually didn't even know uh, Go Motion made videos of her speed edits. I just thought she kind of just made them that, that was go, know, like I, like way before like before she started making her um retrospectives like since 2015 she, that she was famous for making fnaf speed edits she made like hundreds of them oh wow i didn't even know that wow <laughs> I, I, I admittedly though i i didn't start watching go motion until like last year yeah yeah i i get that like i only started watching her after i figured out she was the one who made nightmare jj oh well, that's cool. Um, speaking of fan-made animatronics, what about the draw kill animatronics? Yeah, I was never gonna include those. So, <laughs> so many other FNAF icebergs had them on there, but I was just like, I I just didn't want to. I'm not saying they're bad. And I know you might anything, say, oh, you just didn't want to. There's enough reason to not include them, but honestly. I just feel the draw kill animatronics just aren't really that memorable in my opinion. They always just feel like they just feel really generic in my opinion, and it and they didn't kind of pop off like something like something like Nightmare JJ did or like I I, I would have in, in all honesty 
I would have been more likely to include Welcome to Freddy Land than I was to include Draw Kill. Oh, true. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. This wasn't on my list, but what about that FNAF 3 fan game that wasn't FNAF 3 and it kind of used, like, it used Candy the Cat and it was, like, kind of terrible? Um, yeah, I, I actually, I, 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 I can't really remember why I didn't include that. I remember thinking about it, but I just felt, I, like, another FNAF fan game open source I included because, you know, there was nothing that could have been done about that game and it did cut and it did kind of blow up a lot more yeah. like in terms of like the, the response to what scott did which which i i'll be honest i i love fizz nominal but really i i i don't i i understand why scott did what he did oh yeah of course like i like who who wouldn't have done what he did but i just feel uh the five nights freddy's three fan game was uh, it, 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 it was kind of a Five Nights Freddy's 3 fan game, but then he changed it to Return to Freddy's, which kind of sprung off into its own thing after that. Yeah, good, good for Whereas him. another FNAF fan game open source... Was directly a copy of FNAF 2. Not a copy, yeah, but and it didn't kind of FNAF blow off into anything else, unless you count FNAF Plus, which I don't, because that's a reimagining, not a remake. That's also There's like, a difference. That's also, like, officially, like, by, like, not by Scott, but he's endorsing it. Yes, yes. This, this next uh, entry is kind of really, it's one of my favorite FNAF related fan made medias. You might not have heard of it, uh, the FNAF musical by Random Encounters. Oh my god, that is legendary. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's just so good. Okay, I hate to bring up Smash again, but did you know the voice actor for Freddy in that? Is the is announcer! The, voice, uh, the announcer in Smash. I know! Oh, it's so cool! And he's the police yeah, officer. Yeah, and he also in that voices Joker. Oh, and he's Joker, and he's also the policeman in the one section where they're trying to arrest Mark in the FNAF musical. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but yeah, he's he's in the FNAF musical. He's in Smash as Joker, and he's in Persona Five as Joker. That oh, that's honestly great. Um, this next one is a very iconic um, theory, and you're gonna probably shudder when I say it. But phone guy being the purple guy. To be honest, I I believed phone guy is Freddy more than I believe phone guy is purple guy. Really? I I believe phone guy is Freddy was first made popular by Eight Bit Gaming. I want to say. I think so. Yeah, I think it was. But honestly, I felt phone guy has is freddy had more weight to it than phone guy like all right the main basis the main basis like the, the the main basis for that for the phone guy is purple guy theory is that they're both human yeah as if there's not seven billion humans in the world already granted less in 1987 when fnaf 2 takes place but still <laughs> i mean to be fair though there was more than just at the time. It wasn't a too bad theory with the whole not like. I don't think it Foxy, was, but that's just drink. because back then there was just a lot of gray area, and people didn't, just really didn't know what to think of the franchise back then. Yeah. I mean, keep in mind that was the time people were believing junk like Golden Toy Freddy. <laughs> the nostalgia. Um, oh yeah. You might not know about this one. I'm going to send you the image on Discord right now so you can check it. Um, the Russian roulette looking FNAF board game with SFM models. You know, I will say this. I don't remember. I, I think I might have heard about this once. I remember Bob Nights at Freddy's The Game. I just don't remember seeing this box art. But I no, will say... No, because there's a difference, though. There's, like, there's a FNAF game where, like, you have to, like, pick pizzas out of Freddy's box. That's not this. Yeah, I know, no, I know, but that that was... I, th that, I No, I remember hearing about another one after this. A a after that one. Oh, you mean Survival 6 a.m.? Which I assume was this one. Which, I, now, I, so I don't remember seeing this box art, but I will say, in regard to the SFM models, uh, a prototype of, um... One of the McFarland sets actually did use the SFM. No, you're models. getting too far. Stop spoiling my entries. Sorry, sorry. I'll, 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 I'll let you get to that. Um, now 
I'll finally give you some time to talk about this. Companies using fan models, Funko Fribber plush toy, Funko posters, the Balloon Boy dangler based off of that withered BB render, that one really bad Bonnie hanger plushie inspired by the Splinks model. Literally just go off on a rant. Okay, to be honest, I just feel like fan art being used by YouTubers and being used by Scott and being used by companies, I feel is a very understandable mistake to make, honestly. I know I'm going to get attacked for saying that with how much controversy there is around these, but like, to be completely honest, that is a mistake that not only Scott has made, but that anyone could make. But it seems like Scott is not very good when it comes to having a grasp on the merch because a lot of the FNAF merch is pretty terrible. Yeah, I just feel maybe he... Uh, again, maybe it's just... And I, 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 I know I just said this, but maybe he's just kind of... He's just kind of too trusting in other people and kind of yeah. isn't as focused on it as he should be because he just feels... And, and just the merch companies can literally get away with anything and just lie to him about it. Like, Especially like, with Funko and Scholastic. Those are the big offenders. Say again? Especially with like Funko and Scholastic. Those guys are the big offenders with the Freddy Files and all of Funko's merchandise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do... Like, I, 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 I do feel Scholastic can get away with it a little better though because... To be fair, if you do look up Google images of the characters, a lot of fan-made models do Oh yeah, exist. definitely. Like, they could be mistaken for real renders. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, but do you want to know something actually, like, really neat? Yeah? So, um, when I was younger, I would go to Toys R Us a lot, and, like, at least where, like, they had, in my area, they had, like, in the gaming section with like all the like gaming stuff they'd have like um uh giant posters of like different games that were like relevant at the time like they were pretty big and they had mm -hmm. a fnaf poster once i'm gonna send you the image they used for the poster just wait oh my god There's i walked no in and i'm like oh my god i was a child it was early during fnaf's release but even i could tell it was not the official models what the heck were they thinking? I do, like, this is Toys R Us! Like, it <laughs> oh was a huge my poster! God. Just, just like, oh no, why? Like, they even, they cropped out the watermark. Like, in the, in the giant poster they, they made. They cropped, wow. Just, just wow, like. At least, at least with what Scott said, at least with what Scott said, at least... At least he, like, probably didn't know that Funko lied to him, if they did lie to him, whoever whoever lied to him, or if he genuinely thought it was theirs. But, like, literally, if you're cropping out proof that somebody else made it, then just, wow. Like, that's obviously not official. But that, anyway, not the point. We could really go on about this for hours. Merch companies oh, yeah, need to stop doing this. Um, now, this, I think, well, these two... Are kind of like my last ones. Uh, first one is Bite of 83 versus Bite of 87. It's Bite of 83. Don't no one deny it, please. Yes, there's a Bite of 83 and there was a Bite of 87. Bite of 83 we see in FNAF 4. Bite of 87 we don't see ever. Yes. You know what's funny though? For how big the Bite of 87 is in the FNAF community, it's really only mentioned once and that's in FNAF 1. It's not mentioned at all in FNAF 2. It's implied by the scrap of the toy animatronics, but it's not ever said. Yeah, and I feel theories for it have died down too. Like, like I, I still, like really no more evidence has come out for it. Like I feel most people still, still stand by the same theories they had during FNAF 2, because literally nothing has come of it since. Yeah, like everyone either thinks it's Mangle, Toy Chica, or Withered Foxy. I think Mangle. I think Toy Chica. Exactly. That's like it's 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 really whatever. Like it it's it's does it really matter in the story? Not really. No, no. I, I, I really feel I really feel it was probably just a quick way to get rid of to get rid of the toy animatronics. Which I mean is when you think of the grand story of FNAF in total, the toys, the withereds, the phantoms, the nightmares, the classics, they're really not that important to the overall story. Yeah. 
and it's kind of sad like those are like especially like the FNAF 1 gang and the FNAF 2 gang they're pretty nostalgic for me because they're of course the first ones and then like the toy animatronics like lasted nothing like you see them in the box in FNAF 3 the classic animatronics were burned and like all their metal endoskeletons were put in the fun times do, like do, do you want me to be totally honest I know this is definitely going to be one of the most controversial things I say in this video but I feel the only reason anyone likes the toy animatronics is because they were there at the beginning. I mean, that's kind of why, like, I feel like, let, let's pretend that the Rockstar animatronics were in FNAF 2. I feel like they'd be thought of as the same way, but the Rockstar animatronics yeah. kind of just exist. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they swap position, positions... Positions? Jesus Christ. Uh, if they swap positions, I just feel... It would have been, it, like, people, the rock stars would have been just as popular as the toys. Like, I know that's controversial, but I'm I'm just going to call it right now. It's true, The though. only p reason people care about the toys at all is because they were there at the beginning. Yeah, and of course, like, ha having only seen the first game, of course, the second game, the shiny new ones are going to look impressive. But mm. after a while, it's not that impressive. Yeah. And that's why the rock stars never really did anything like they didn't and like the mediocre melodies kind of some of them went down in like popularity because of like their voice lines like mr hippo and um uh what what the heck's his name orville but like rockstar and rockstar foxy i mean fair rockstar foxy had some good voice lines and of course an ultimate custom knife but like rockstar freddy bonnie and chica especially rockstar bonnie and chica add literally nothing like yeah if they weren't in fnaf 6 it would have made no difference the last uh, suggestion is the original FNAF world. The original FNAF world. Oh, Not Halloween boy, that edition, was a but like the eight-bit one. Yeah, that that was that was a doozy. Um, <laughs> are are you talking about the update? Are you talking about the first release that was released on Steam or the beta or both? Well, wait, what was like? You mean the Halloween edition? Yes, yes, the one that had purple geist at the end. Well, I mean, you you could. I I was more referring to like, the the release on Steam. Yeah, yeah, that was, that to me didn't feel like it had any place on the iceberg. Yeah, probably. A controversial opinion, sure. I just feel it wasn't iceberg worthy. That's yeah. a word now. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> And, well, I guess that is the end of our interview, and by extension, the end of the video, and the end of the FNAF iceberg. If you enjoyed this video, I make loads of other FNAF content, and I've also made a Mario iceberg that was also created by Narajan. So if you want to see those, you should subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. You should also join the Discord server. Me and Narajan are moderators there, we do a lot of cool community interactions, and it's really fun. A huge thank you to Narajan for creating this iceberg. It's fantastic, and, and really... Really long. Speaking of which, just to let <laughs> you all you, thank know. You. <laughs> speaking of which, just to let you all know, I'm not doing an iceberg for a, a quite a while as they are pretty hard to make, and I'm really excited to return back to my normal FNAF Mario content. Yeah, yeah. Not... yeah. Don't, don't be expecting more icebergs for a while, I'd say. And of course, Nether John will be also be taking a break from icebergs, at least ones that I'd be covering, because like I don't do Final yeah, Fantasy yeah, like, and whatnot. Like right now, as I, I've said this in the Mario uh, iceberg, and I'm saying, and I said it again earlier, Final Fantasy VII is my next iceberg, and yes. it's probably out. You can put a link in the description if it's out by the time this comes out. Yeah, yeah. And after that, I've really no plans. Yeah, we. Like the next iceberg, I'd say. Tyson will almost definitely be interested in. It won't be coming out until like Christmas. Yes, and we're not. And if you want to know what that iceberg is, check out the Super Mario Director's Cut iceberg. Uh, we're not talking about it here, but go check out that video if you want to see. But again, thank you so much, John, for doing this interview and being so helpful for not just the FNAF icebergs, but also the Mario icebergs. It truly means the world to me. So thank you very much. No, no, thank you as well. It's been, it's been a. It's been a roller. It's been a roller coaster in a good way. It's still <laughs> just, still just surreal that people enjoy something I made enough to watch a feature-length video on it. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to say? Um, all, all, all I can say is just, just thank you to everybody. Honestly, like it, it, it's true. It's truly, it truly means 
it truly means a lot that you guys appreciate the kind of things I make. And d d d don't worry, I, I won't be I won't be gone from the channel entirely. Hell, I won't be gone like with icebergs. Period. Like I said, uh, I do have more icebergs planned and one in the works. Uh, but y you can just y y so yeah. If you want to keep up with me, I am pretty active on Reddit when it comes to icebergs. But I, I pretty much chances are, if there's a social media with my profile pic named Natter John, that's me. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, of course, and. This is also not the last time you'll be seeing our John on the channel since he's 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 well in the in the in the little T community. Uh, he's a big active member on the Discord server. He will make a couple cameos in some future videos, which I haven't talked to him about yet. But I guess it's a good and time that I, <laughs> I know this might seem this might this might definitely be off topic, but I may or may not bring my channel back again. Oh. His last video was Dry Dry Ruins. Now it's coming back for being Dry Dry and in Ruins. Well, I did have one lost video. Oh, no. This is going to turn into an iceberg of its own. The Lost Natter John video. The Lost. But I'm not. <laughs> I'm just going to say it right now. Before you guys go speculating what that about what that video is, two words. Nanya business. Isn't that like three <laughs> words? No, no, no. It's, uh... Uh, it, no, I was kind of referencing the meme, you know, none your business. Oh, okay. Um, well, then I guess that's it. I've been your host, Little T. He's been Natter John, and I'll see you guys next time. See you guys.